Welcome back to Unnecessary Roughness. Why are you look so weird? I don't know. Like you're sitting very uncomfortably. I know. Yeah. Unnecessarily uncomfortable. Yeah, my titties are sitting right too. I don't even feel I good. Mean, he's really on one. He's, uh, welcome oh into the show. Brandon Walker had quite a performance today. Didn't I? I, I? I you, won the you show. Really, you did win the show. You really turned it on. And, I mean, a couple ad reads, I think, were in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Well, I get to talking about dicks. <laughs> Thank you for watching the YouTube channel. Again, like, subscribe, comment, share. We got to get to 10K. We got to do it. Got to get remember, there. You remember what happens at 10K? Sure do. What? Oh, is that the peach bath? No, even oh. better. What? Jack won't let me say it out loud anymore. Okay. Well, okay, that's coming well, soon. That's coming soon. You'll like it, I promise. Like, subscribe, comment, enjoy the show. When have we ever recorded a three-hour podcast? Well, normally we start at four and we don't get out of here till after seven. Okay, fair. And we're now starting I, at five. Dickheads, five. let's go. Now I understand yes. your rationale. See? It's not the hours necessarily. It's no, I know what you're saying. Okay, well, we won't do a cold open. We'll just get right no, into I it. No, I want to do a cold open. That was What are we going to do a cold open about? That was a cold open. You're cold oh. open. What? No, no I run hot. hot. Open. He's no, a hot I run open. hot. hot. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, a hot open sounds gross. And he's just, Ew. huh? Ew. No, it's good. You'd rather hot than cold. A hot open? A hot open sounds gross. It does. I mean, it sounds sexual but how well i mean that's what she's saying no i wasn't but i mean you can definitely for once i don't see it at all but mm. well hot yeah i oh, get like hot a noun. explain the like i'd rather female anatomy to katie <laughs> like okay. a noun okay i thought it was like an action or no an act. no you wanted this to is be. i don't put this out. it was cold <laughs> That would be. No, that's not correct. Yeah. I'm never. The heat either. helps. Yes, I got it now. I okay. got it. I okay. do oh. not want to be here until 8. <laughs> You're not going to be here until 8. Why do you keep hollering around 8? We just got. <laughs> sometimes. I have a day tonight. Why do you always schedule a date for the night of unnecessary roughness anyway? That's a really good point. Uh, it's to a question be, more to, than a point. When you well, go on enough, they happen to be on the same often. Thank you, A. And B. Uh, normally we record on Tuesdays, but we didn't because I was at the Barstool Classic in uh, my favorite city in the country, Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, so I scheduled this date before I realized I was going to the Classic. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. How long has this date been on the docket? Well, I guess. Well, never okay. Mind. To, be, I mean, I uh, guess to be fair, to be fair, Jack, I already knew about the Classic. I forgot about it. Yeah. Oh, she, okay. She had to, also had to wait for him to get out of prison. Uh, <laughs> Katie, no. how's your dating life? Good? It was fine. I had... I matched with someone on t on Hinge today that was like, if we have a bad date, am I going to go on the pod? I was like, excuse me? Well, yeah, you don't wait. think you'll come in. No, that's a good line by him. I mean, you just did it. You did notice it. Yeah, no, I'm not like, give him say his name or his credit, but it was just like fucking weird. Hi, welcome to Unnecessary Roughness, Barstool's college football podcast brought to you by High Noon Hard Seltzer. There's none in front of me, so I'm just going to point at this beautiful little logo right here. It is... Delicious. Yeah. The peach, the lime, the grapefruit, the black cherry. We didn't get to do our drum roll because there's not any on the table. No, but that's okay. Jack and Katie, uh, <laughs> they're they're doing a good job. Anyway, we don't even have the box. Any anyway, we just have three cans. I didn't oh. do anything. Whoa, this is for the sponsor. Uh, also. Nice cans, Katie. Mm, you too. Yeah. Um, Katie sent me a DM the other day that said nice cans. Really? Yeah, yeah. When were your cans looking good? The your high noon cans. At at the classic they're not as good as yours though thank Brandon. you very much okay. you uh, think we wear the same bra size <laughs> i don't stand for this i don't stand for it either Jack. yeah because if know, you did something similar uh, he does he does i don't know what you guys are talking about he makes fun of my boobs all the time i have never made fun of your boobs <laughs> I'll never make fun of something so expensive okay it is Unnecessary roughness. We're going to talk college football. High noon is delicious. Real juice, real vodka, real people for people like me and you. Can I please say that I tasted uh, one of the competitors that also sponsors something else at this company and realized how just highly superior high noon is. Subpar Again. the other one was. Uh, it, it tastes like shock. This one right here, though. Nah. This is good. The black cherry. I got the, the watermelon. Mm, boy. The peach is, I mean, again. Bathed in peach, yes. Well, we still haven't done it. Why are you hollering? Because I don't want to be here till eight. <laughs> Do you want oh. to just go? Hey, no, make it make the announcement. Do you want me to? Well, Monday morning. Go ahead and get ready for unnecessary roughness all up in your face. We're going to two a week. Officially. Officially going to two a week. And 
Uh, we would like to, uh, Casey would like to formally apologize for not having one or not having two a week for the last couple of weeks. No, but I, that wouldn't, was I didn't say you did. Her. You were the one that made the announcement. Yeah, but you kept saying no, no, no not two, two a week. No, I don't, I didn't. I don't like I, the roughnecks. I don't want it I out didn't, there. I said, well, let's do it. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, it's halfway through August and we're still only doing one. Well, in fact, I don't know. Like next week, it's going to be tough because I'm Yeah, I'm why we, we're saying things that we're not sure were because, like we originally did. That would be a good bit, though. We're going to two next week, guys. And we, and then never, we never do. Uh, up until well, actually know during the season. season yeah. We know during the season. Well, right. Jack gets high and forgets. Correct. He sure does. Uh, also, I mean, I never get high. Bri- except when like people in the office start smoking in the middle of the office. Because I, I have nothing wrong with marijuana <laughs> or anybody getting high. But. I just don't myself that's okay. fair um also three weeks from today we record the first college football show i am of the so year. excited when i got that mm-hmm. email i felt all tingly inside also one last thing and and uh the less the le- lesser said about the better today but what, what did he just say the less the fewer the the, the less we talk about today the better because oh. there's no real announcement yet um i have a very exciting announcement about College football this year. It is an exciting announcement. Coming for you. very, very soon. Oh, you told her? I told Finally. her. Finally. She took it. Yeah. yeah she, what she, the fuck? How long did you guys know? No, I was doing a joke. 24 hours before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah I she told, told uh, Brandon told us and then was like, make it seem on the podcast like we, you guys have known for three months. Correct. He did call me. Yeah. I, I thought her. he was dying. No, I, I said, yeah. I, yeah. I texted her and said, can I talk to you? And she was like, oh my God, what? And I, I called her and then. Yeah, oh, like who's dying. dying? What's anyway, wrong? That announcement will be made very soon. Um, is that what that meeting was about today? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I was just staring at you Correct. from the outside, yeah. looking flipping at me you? off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you're cheating on me, so I'm not cheating on you. I'm just with yourself, seeing other people. No, there's other people. No, it's just me. Okay. Whatever. We've said too yeah. much already. <laughs> okay. 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 Right. okay. Okay. Today we're going to talk about news. We're going to talk about the. Uh, I told everybody last week to bring your top five storylines of the year. Uh, I brought 18. I know. I'm just going to let you rattle them off, and we'll just raise our hand if it's one of ours. I have 18. Katie, how many you got? Because you got more than five, too. 13, 14. You got 14. Damn. Yeah. How many you got, Jack? I brought five because you told me to bring five. 73. <laughs> <laughs> how many do you really have? Seven. But I'm sure we probably overlap. Yeah, I think I would yeah. I would probably think all of them will overlap. So we'll do news. We'll, we'll do our storylines, and that'll be a lot of the show. I'm also going to unveil – ranked my top 10 quarterbacks of the 2021 season he, did, he was doing this when we were sitting out in the the lobby like waiting to get into the room mm-hmm. and i was like what are you doing and he was like i'm gonna rank my top 10 quarterbacks I was like you don't think you should tell anybody else that's on the podcast so that we can also do the same thing just came out i just decided to do it in the moment it was one of my takes one of my takes was uh it was gonna be the second best quarterback and i was like oh i should just rank them we'll right. find a way to poke holes yeah will you i'll try all right, before we get I started... Bet, I bet I could guess your list. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you guys, if, and I'm dead serious right now. I'm about okay. to do a serious thing. Oh, no. No, seriously. Uh, the, okay. So, um, all right. No, this is for real. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me have about two minutes of the podcast time, and I apologize. So, Mississippi State and Ole Miss are arch rivals. And when we talk about college football, we talk about arch rivals. And, like, I do a lot of content where I hate Ole Miss – and Ole Miss people are douchebags and everything. And, and it's friendly college football hate, right? It's, it's stuff that uh, I like to make, you know, it's a good brand for me, Mississippi State, and I do it, and I, and I punch all of these jokes, and it's funny, and it's fantastic and stuff. Um, but sometimes real life, uh, real life just jumps up and grabs you. Anyway, I say all that to say this. Um, two of the most important people in my life are, are, are two of the people in my family are huge Ole Miss fans. My Aunt Gail, who is my dad's sister, uh, and her husband, his name is Foster, uh, they're huge Ole Miss fans, gigantic Ole Miss fans. His name is Foster Kennedy. They're gigantic Ole Miss fans. Uh, what a name. And, and I'm talking about, huh? So what a name. Yeah, I, he's he was wonderful. And I, and I, I so they're huge Ole Miss fans, and I'm talking tailgate tent in the Grove. I'm talking they got a condo in Oxford. Huge Ole Miss fans, mm-hmm. gigantic. Uh, they're, 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 they're every weekend. They're big tailgaters. They are the prototypical Ole Miss fans. I'm the prototypical Mississippi State fan. But – their family. And even though I joke about Ole Miss, I still have a lot of friends, like my friend Matt Warren, one of my best friends. Uh, he's an Ole Miss guy. He's Jennings, Bradley Barton. These are all guys that will carry me to the grave at some point. I love I love them. Here's my thing. Foster Kennedy was my Aunt Gail's um, husband. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And Foster Kennedy passed away a couple days ago uh, after a long battle with, with ALS. He is a huge Ole Miss fan. All Ole Miss friends love him and everything. I'm a huge State fan. But a couple years ago, when uh, when times were really tough on me, May 23rd, 2018, I was doing the Mississippi State podcast. I was a podcast director for SEC Country. Cox Media shut the company down. And while I was okay financially, I, I never went through hard times, really. I just had a lot of uncertain days because the company shut down. I had to figure out what I was going to do. I ended up going independent and doing more cowbell and picking up the gambling shows, which led me to here. Um but in that darkest moment for me, when I had four kids under the age of eight, and I needed somebody in my life, and Foster Kennedy and Gail Kennedy, my Ole Miss aunt and uncle, I raised about $5,000 to buy equipment, podcast equipment that I could build a business for my own. They gave me over half that money. They never questioned it, and it was actually to build a podcast called More Cowbell. It was my Mississippi State podcast. Anyway, like I said... He was one of the, his name was Foster Kennedy. He was uh, my Aunt Gail's husband. He just passed away Tuesday night after a long battle with ALS. Uh, he was one of the best men that I ever met. And uh, they're well, one of the, uh, they're two of the best people I ever met. And uh, I just wanted to tell you guys about it. And that is my serious bit for this really show. Sorry. Because he was a great human being, a great gentleman, and one hell of an Ole Miss rebel. Shout out to Foster Kennedy. May he rest in peace. That's it. I'm sorry to hear that. That's okay. Thoughts That's okay. and prayers for your family. Seriously. He was uh, he was a wonderful person. Now let's get back to the silly stuff. Sorry about that. I apologize. No, don't no, don't be warranted. sorry. It's it's really nice uh, to hear a heartwarming thing from you, isn't it? Brandon Walker has a soul. He does. Isn't that weird? He doesn't no. have a cold heart. No, 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 no. Um, so what else we got? We got college, we got news. We got college football. We're gonna do our top ten storylines. Uh, how are the Roughnecks doing? I got. I think Paige Browning DM me, and she's like, she's oh. wanting to see if we're going to the College Station game or something. I don't yeah, know. because they uh, they're like doing a a meetup, like an, an unnecessary roughness meetup yeah, at that, that game in college. Or what? necessary. We. I mean, we have to no, go. I see necessary. Mm. We have to go. It's yeah. unnecessarily necessary. necessary. Right. Yeah, it is. But if you think about it, it really. By the way, I want I want Paige Browning to weigh in on this or on Twitter. All the girls that listen to us, do you think they would buy a shirt? That just said the word unnecessary on the front and nothing else. Yes. I would wear the shit out of that shirt. Right? We should do that. Yeah. I love that. Let's put on a shirt called unnecessary. And do hoodies, too. Just right. unnecessary. Yeah. Yes. I kind of have a little tiny logo or something. But, but other yeah, than that. Yeah. Put it on the, what's yeah. this, the part yolk. of this? The yolk. I hate You're that back. Word too. No, the yolk. Speaking That's an of, egg. Speaking of, I have, no. my, I have my new hoodies on. Mm-hmm. Be a nice human. Yeah. Be a nice human. Yeah. I gave you one. Why aren't you wearing it? Because it's 95 degrees in here. It's and also, I run That's hot. a really good point. I run hot. It is. Well, I. You sh- asked him why isn't he wearing a hoodie in the middle of the summer? Mm-hmm. But it, it can get cold <laughs> in the office. Okay, first that's of all. true. Second of all, the just reason not I'm wearing in these it is, rooms. No, but I, I'm wearing it, one, because we just got them all in today. But also, the shirt that I'm wearing underneath it is a very tiny shirt. And, Correct, I, and yeah. I did not want to offend no, you're, the YouTube viewers. You're popping today. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, that would have been such a shame if that happened. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah she's she right. Won, yeah. <laughs> we definitely don't it want that to happen. It would be such a shame if this room just became like a sauna. But okay, now that she has this on uh, on screen, I got two things to say about this. So we just went live. The Barstool Sportsbook just went live in Colorado on Monday in Virginia yesterday. Uh, shout out to Colorado, uh, you Buffs fans, you Colorado State fans, everybody out there, and Virginia. All, all the stoners. Uh, you got uh, you know your Virginia Tech fans, your Virginia fans, your Liberty fans. I mean, just a ton of teams in Virginia. Uh, but there you go. You can uh, download the app and get ready and just be betting with us on the Bar- Barstool Sportsbook. I'm sure – I know I will have a bunch of college football exclusives this year. I'm sure you will too. I will, absolutely. I would imagine Jack might have a couple as well. We also uh, were told that we're going to have unnecessary roughness prop bets too. Good, good, good. We're going to have all yeah. that. Now, uh, I say that to say this. Uh, shout out Colorado and Virginia for having the Barstool Sportsbook. You put out on Twitter, Jack, on Unnecessary Roughness. Oh. Mm-hmm. You put out a tweet saying one of the most un- underrated um, traditions in college football is Virginia Tech running out through Lane Stadium. Mm-hmm. And that is objectively a fact. It is cool that they run out during Inner Sandman. It's cool they run through the It's cool they do all that. It's a great look. It's fantastic. I don't see how that's arguable. The replies just show how sensitive and whiny and stupid college football fans can really be. Why, as college football fans, when we see when we see a video of Virginia Tech running through Inner Sandman, why does a fan think it necessary to be the first reply and say, oh, yeah, but they can't beat Clemson? 
Yeah. That who would, gives a shit? Who, ca- who cares? Who, who gives a shit? Well, oh, yeah, but they they, they, oh. they they haven't won anything at home in five years. Who cares? It's cool. Uh, why does everything that is posted about any team have to relate to your team and you have to put it's, your dick on the table and say, oh, yeah, but I'm a Clemson fan and y'all can't beat us. Shut the fuck up, you redneck. You guys, well, you guys <laughs> didn't win anything until like 10 years ago. It's the laziest take. I say that all the time. Anytime you and I talk about college football – it immediately, the easiest chirp back is, well, what's A&M done? What's Mississippi right. State done? It's like, hey, you motherfuckers. Like, we just want to talk about college football. And arguably, if you're a college football fan, that scene at Virginia Tech is awesome. From like, 1998 to 2011, Virginia Tech beat Clemson every game they played. And also, objectively, Ralphie running out in front of the Colorado team is cool as hell. Mm-hmm. They can go 0 and 12, still cool. Yeah. Objectively, Bevo being on the sidelines is cool as hell. They can be 1 and 10 and never be back. It's cool as hell. These college football exists in a world that has pageantry and coolness that just exudes out of every pore of it, and it doesn't matter what the win loss records are. Is Virginia is Clemson a better program than Virginia Tech? Of course, nobody would ever argue any different. But when I'm saying, "Hey, Lane Stadium at Virginia Tech, it's really cool to see them run through Metallica," I'm not actually saying, "Hey, Clemson, you guys look stupid." Yeah, it's like why why can't a compliment to a team just be a compliment? Just be a compliment. Like why why do we have to be insulting somebody else? Plus, with college football, the whole thing is it's like yes, you have the results on the field and the games themselves, but the pageantry around the passion of the fan bases right. can be completely separate. Like Auburn could suck every single year. That bald eagle flying around is cool as shit. Yeah, it, you know, it really is. No, you're, you're but right. You, but I guarantee you, if we've tweeted about that, Alabama fans would have. Would it be, oh, oh yeah, but they can't win in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, we should try that. Let's let's just. Uh, what are what we should definitely tweet out something complimentary about Auburn, and, and just see what happens. And just see what, see what happens. happens. Yeah, yeah. All right. I and, mean, and I did it yesterday because we were launching Virginia, and yeah. I, I think, ESPN did the thing um, where they were just ranking traditions, ranking tailgate right. places and whatnot. Wait, and and they, within their top five, you can get to the yeah in a second. But within their top five traditions, wasn't the Virginia Tech um, running out to enter Sandman? It's arguable that it's within the top five, whatever. We don't have to talk about that. But it is something that's very, very cool. And I feel like we've kind of forgotten since the days of a Beamer, Beamer ball have kind of right. gone away. No, because they're not in marquee spots yeah. anymore. They're not in marquee spots. They're not in big games. Also, we oh. never talk about them as a massive, massive fan base either. They are like rapid yes and well and, i mean how many times and obviously everybody in this room is going to say virginia tech but i feel like a normal question is like when you hear inner sandman what do you think of like do you think of mariana rivera yeah or, or virginia yeah. tech i think of virginia tech i do too i mean i'm biased because i grew up in the right. northeast when mariana rivera was yeah right dominant but i remember that when i searched it on twitter to see if i could just tweet the video as um enter sandman at virginia tech at, you know what popped up instead i ended up having to download it and whatnot and put on a burner but usually before i tweeted i searched on twitter to see if i can find a video and just tweet it easy there was a bunch of the videos of when you guys you and the old barstool college football show when you and tommy and dave and big cat were debating over what is enter sandman known for oh really that's yeah. still up there huh God, that was when so are we ago. uh when are we telling people where the first college the college football show trip is i was wondering Not that us. What? the first live when we film the tape, the first one. Oh, that's oh. in studio at the end of it. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna tell them. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 It's a pretty good list. Huh? It's a pretty good list. Yeah. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited. Katie's excited. Oh, you're she's going, aren't oh, you? Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. That was that was a, a me request. Oh, to have Katie a, on the road with a you? A little bit. And Blatman had a bunch. Well, I told. Blatman I also he I also kill. had a lot to do with it. Yeah, I can I'm flip sure everything you. around for everyone. Well, why don't you get negative when I say, when she says she did it, you're like, oh, yeah. And then you say, blame it. And I say, I did it. And you say, oh, yeah, I'll just slip everything around. I meant that more positive. You're not going like to slip. I PA. I, I'm you're a, not a slipper. I PA. I plan. I'll connect to the Viceroy's. Any on air stuff. I do a bunch. There's also a really cool announcement coming in September, which we can't announce yet, but it will also be a part of the Barstool College Football so Show. So many cool announcements, what? huh? What? what is that? So I don't even know what that is. You do. You just probably don't realize that it's connected to the live show too. Okay. It's a bigger. It's a bigger thing than just college football show, but it will also be a part of the college football show. Oh. Katie's wondering how. Yeah, I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. I didn't know that. I didn't know mm-hmm. about. That. Oh, that that was my idea in the in the meeting today. Really? Mm-hmm. How about that? I don't know if I know. Hmm. I have no idea either. Well, then, Jack, as uh, 
as um, as um, here we go. <laughs> before you before you go as um <laughs> as the Brandon Walker on billions of shows could we just uh, turn the high noon to face instead of you to the camera so that we can get uh, like when it faces me yeah all right anyways uh continue now you can now you can roast him now you can remind me of um um, I wasn't going to remind uh, you of anything. Of, of, of something. I wasn't. I wasn't I, <laughs> it's okay. That's a running gag on this show. No, it's not. It's it's fine. Everything's all good. It's fantastic. Let's go. Let's start doing the news. Let's do college football news. Uh, we'll try to go a little quicker. Um, <laughs> God, that hair is so bad. Can I just. Quinn Ewers. We talked about him a Quinn lot Ewers, last week. The number one recruit, basically, of all time, is now at Ohio State. And he's there, so he. Because. Uh, he can get that holy kombucha money. Uh, that uh, so he's he's nil with holy kombucha and he's drinking whatever that is right there. I may be leaving Texas soon to take it to the next level, but I made sure to take the best Texas drink company with me. I'm pumped to be representing holy beverages, holy kombucha for many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anybody getting bus vibes from him? What? No. Bus? No. Bust? Bust? No. Bust. B-U-S-T? Oh. I know what you're saying. No. Yeah. Like, he's just so hyped. Well, See, here, here's the thing, though. It's I don't know if I would say bust, yeah. but I'm definitely getting the vibe that he's not going to live up to He has a lot of hype correct, potential. Correct. That, that is, is, you know what there, I mean? Is there so much... Is, it's going to be a lot of hype and potential to live up. Bust is a bad word. But it's like, but, it, but in, you know, subjectively, it would be a bust if he's not, like, the best ever because of the way we're treating like, him. Like, is Cam Newton a bust? No. For sure not. For sure not. Yeah. So so no, he, he probably won't be a. Bust, I mean, he won an MVP. But it, Quinn Ewers and Ohio State are going to be a weird marriage. They're going to be a weird marriage because Ohio State fans are going to want him very quick. Right. And and JT uh, or CJ never CJ Stroud. Um, I feel like CJ Stroud won't. It will be hard for him to struggle. Yeah, he he doesn't. He can't struggle. I mean, he has the two best wide receivers in the nation, like well, the, I, the, I the guess best I combo. It definitely has the best receiver group in the country. Yeah, yeah. 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 I see what you're saying. You, you just don't think it's possible for. I mean, it's still. Possible. And he did look good. I mean, it's spring game, schming game, but um, that was weird. But don't ever say that again. Um, Justin, <laughs> Justin Fields struggled in his spring game, if we remember correctly, and there were some rumors about his accuracy issues. And then this past year, CJ or Stroud. Yeah, we were all doing it. Um, he. <laughs> Played very well in the spring game and um, seemed to be a step ahead. Now, obviously, he, he'd been there for a while, opposed to Justin Fields just transferring. He in. will mess up one fucking time, and they'll be calling I feel for like this kid. He like, has to have a really bad game. Okay, like Quinn, or, I, I feel like he he has to have a really bad game, but like it'll be just so resounding from the entire fan base. We're like, get this kid in. Like, why we've got him early? Why not play him? All right. Um, Here's also, a, I, executive in de, a decision uh, coming on the NIL stuff. Like, um, I feel like everybody's going to be signing with somebody. Mm -hmm. So unless it's like like DJ Uyunglele is going to be on the – he's going to be on the, the Fansville commercials? That's got to be money. That's got to be some money. Uh, that's some money, money. Is he replacing Larry Culpepper? Were you guys pro no. Larry Culpepper or anti? Pro. Pro. I Katie doesn't know who that is. Very yeah, anti no, Larry Culpepper. <laughs> Why? You liked Larry Culpepper? I thought it was weird um, that it got weird with less miles. The Dr. Pepper commercials of the guy that was selling Dr. Larry Culpepper. Yeah, no, yeah. I know the commercials, just not yeah. him as football. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hated those commercials. Really? Y'all liked them? I ironically liked I them. Th yeah, that's why I think they I ironically bad. liked them, too. Like, they were bad. They were so bad, they were good. I don't think he was around last year. I think he was, wasn't he? No, I think I retired. Larry Culpepper did? I so thought Larry Culpepper was not around last year. So now year. it's DJ Ungalele? I guess. Let me. Anyway, I this, mean, the lyric, it's, I don't think it's we can, cringeworthy. I don't think we sure, can just but. have a take on every NIL signing because it's just, uh, just going to be so much now. What school? I mean, this did, hey, it's this a one's weird. fine. This one's no, fine. no, no, no. But I'm saying it's weird. Like, you think sometimes, like, it makes sense to give, like, an O lineman, like, a big, like, all you can eat thing. Like, this is just a weird I think that one's. I think that one's based. I get the Texas, but, like, kombucha. Yeah. Kombucha is No, but that holy kombucha has, like, a bunch of different drinks. Fair. I think it makes sense, and I think um, it's probably big in Texas, and they probably yeah, no, but I'm, I'm going to be like completely honest with you, I've never heard of that. Me either, but I just assume that maybe... It's regional. I but assume I mean, it's kombucha. Kombucha just came around like the last couple of years, so yeah, uh, you've been, been gone. It's yeah. the yeah. white chick's anthem. You're a Bostonian. I am. Larry I, I Culpepper I was has not I'm been around there. since m the, um, the 2018 season. Really? Yep. Really? He was retired after 2017. 
2018, I believe, was the weird stuff with Les Miles. Mm. Then 2019. Oh, the investigating the stuff. Investigating with, with like Bosworth. And then, and, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Whatever. Okay. Now it's DJ Ungale. Like, Dr. Pepper Money's got to be yeah. a fat bag. I wouldn't mind getting some of that Dr. Pepper Money. Did you see money. that Mark Wahlberg has three Chevy dealerships in Columbus, Ohio? Yeah, no. Well, Jack Sawyer oh, got, got that big. That was a good-looking truck. Also, yeah, that kid's – they're saying – that kid's already NFL ready. Jack Sawyer? Yeah. I mean, he's the next Bose to Chase Young. Uh, yeah, whatever. There's always a next one, right? There's always a next one. What school is it that banned their athletes from Barcelona? Louisville. Louisville. Sorry about Louisville. Louisville. Mississippi State. What? USF. When did that happen? Kentucky. Mississippi State. They didn't yeah. make that announcement. Not announcement, but C and D. Mm. I deleted wow. all Louisville a few moments ago before the show started. Oh. Wow. They must really hate what you, do you huh? How do you see in D what Barstool, uh, Barstool We're athlete? using their image. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Kareem just well, says a lot of these, this and I delete it. A lot of these places, like, if they wanted to, if DJ Uwe Galele yeah. um, went on Dr. Pepper and was wearing Clemson stuff, Clemson could see in D because DJ can't wear his, just like yeah. Tom Brady, if he was Correct. with Rolex or something, he couldn't wear a Buccaneers jersey That's unless like, he got permission from the right. Buccaneers. When you're watching like commercials and there's an athlete and they're yeah. always wearing like a black hat yeah. or just a team color hat with yeah. no logo on it. Yeah, yeah. I, Mississippi State frustrates me to no end, man, because they will see and DS quicker than anybody. They would, and I'm out here pimping them. You are. I'm out here giving them. That's give, put, Putting their name everywhere, and they're making our viceroy's life hell. No, they're, yeah, that's they're, awful. They're, and, and they're just and like Mississippi State. Play the game, man. Play the game. I'm out here. I'm out. I'm out here putting you on. I'm. I'm trying to. I got you in Barstool. I got you in Manhattan. I got you all over the country. Give us. Give us a little bit every now and then. Quit being so hoity-toity. Ole Miss is trying to suck Ben Mintz's dick to get in with him. They're trying. They got Lane Kiffin acting like Ben Mintz is somebody to talk to. Lane Kiffin would never spit on Ben Mintz if he was on fire, but they're trying to get inside Barstool, so they're doing it. Play the game with us, baby. Come on, come oh, on, yeah, Mr. State. I agree. I agree. I don't know why any college at this point wouldn't want to play the game with Barstool. I understand that you know, and it, I got into a Twitter fight for about ten oh, I hours saw. yesterday. I couldn't stop. Yeah, I, I saw you get in there, and then I was I like, "Oh, that's going to be an all-day thing." I could not help myself at all. But like, I understand the you know the the hesitation sometimes. But your your demographic at your college is quite literally the demographic that's the biggest that we have. Why would you purposely go out and be like, you can't have anything to do with the fastest growing media company on the planet because they've made a really fucking bad joke 10 years ago. Jed Fish wanted to roll out the red carpet. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a huge quote for the bar. Down for the in, in Tuscan. Bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't wait for that. Oh, man, I think the, they're going to have to cancel the bowl now because Primmy County pulled out $40,000. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to have to. The, the county down there uh, pulled $40,000 worth of funding. Or uh, a half a, a half a bet for Dave. Yeah, forty thousand dollars. That was no. their funding. Yeah, and they that's... made a big deal. They made a statement. It was, Do they know how much was money 40... Dave? Has? That's your no, makeup no. money. I mean, literally. Like that's. I mean, Dave is worth two hundred million dollars by himself. And between me and him, me and Dave are worth two hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, correct. And you yeah. throw in Jack, I mean, and that number goes up to two hundred here, million dollars. Here's the thing, and I'm not going to go on this soapbox because I did it on Twitter. I've been doing it for years. It's like all of these blue check marks. You know, they're so pissed that now we're going to probably be partnered with the MLB, which I think is awesome. And it's like I will always respond very kindly and say, if you would like to speak to a woman who actually works here, I'm more than willing to talk to you. Never one time do they actually reach out to me. And then they take all the replies from the stoolies, who, by the way, are also just complete assholes to us sometimes, right. too. And like, see, see, Barstool's harassing. It's like, I did not have anything to do with that. I just very kindly responded to you, gave you an opportunity. And then, yes, there are assholes on the Internet. Shocking. Let's uh, let, let's speed through the news. And then I'll do my top ten quarterbacks. We'll, I will get into storylines. I think that will carry most of the show. Um, and I also have one question I want to ask. All right, so – Arizona I'm, State has placed DB coach Chris Hawkins and wide receiver coach Prentice Gill on administrative leave. As uh, see, I, I, that's why I can't. I, I struggle to, to believe in Arizona State this year because they got all the talent. They got a good quarterback. I like the coach, but how much behind the scenes is going to like? Remember Hugh Freeze's last year, and Hugh Freeze can coach. His last year at Ole Miss, when there were all those rumors, mm-hmm. they went like five and seven. There's just too much noise around yeah. it because I mean they are 18 to 23 year olds, you yeah. know, too. So it's not like the professional guys that are just. I mean, and, and granted, at this point now they're 17 too, but. That's why when we talked about ASU, was it last week? I said that I, they could either be like really, really surprisingly good or an absolute disaster, just depending on if they're 
the off the field stuff trumps the on the field Herman, stuff. That jacket he's wearing there is fucking fire. It is. That is fantastic. All right, let's go. Let's go through the news. Uh, oh yeah. Mm. yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of um, R.I.P. Bobby Bowden, a legend. I think legend. we've already kind of we were talking about him when we found out it was terminal yeah. uh, a couple weeks ago. So we're not going to spend a lot of time here. Um, just everybody that ever played for him says he was a great man. You don't People hear a bad word about him. Says he was a great him. man, and um, whether he was a great man or not, his college football record resume mm-hmm. just second to none. He built that program from nothing, and again, 1987 to 2000, top five every year is just unheard of, and incredible. Great coach, great man, great leader. Uh, dead at uh, 92 years old. It is so crazy to see 1929 yeah. as this birth year. But That's he was just crazy. so. I mean, he he's just. He was yeah, a giant I, of the game. And and I, I will say this. Bobby Bowden is a legend that deserved legendary status. He grew up in a time, or he came up in a time, and he was successful in a time where he was sharing legendary status with other men who were chasing the wins record right alongside him, and maybe those men turned out to be phonies and shams, and those men turned out to be fakes, and they weren't legends inside. They were legends outside, but inside they weren't worth a shit. And those men have faded from our consciousness, and they're Mm -hmm. somewhere now, and they're dealing with whatever they've done in their life or whatever they knew or didn't know. I don't know. All I know is this. Bobby Bowden was real. Bobby Bowden was pure, and he turned out to be better than the men who might have bested him on the field some and might have retired as a bigger legend or something in their own minds, but they didn't last. They didn't stand the test time like that man right there will. And, uh, I mean, of course, anytime somebody passes away, you know, the social media, you know, everybody has a story or whatever. We, every, I loved reading all the former players and the people who worked with him because that you could tell they were just, like, actual genuine tributes. It's not just like, oh, he died, here's a great story. Yeah. It's like, no, like, this man was, there was every— love there. Right, there was, this man is actually— who everybody thinks he is, he is really that person. And so, RIP to a legend. Next. Notre Dame on Peacock, by the way, versus Toldio. Um, oh, whoops. <laughs> I was like, huh? My brain totally read it as Toledo, though. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Jack, could you could you read these words? Notre Dame. Thank you very yes. much. Uh, Notre Dame football uh, on Peacock. That's the first time I ever got mad at I'm Jack. I'm just going to warn you right now, uh, Notre Dame fans, football fans, if you're trusting Peacock, Good luck. It's going to be hell. I'm a WWE fan. They house the WWE Network now, and it is a disaster. Is it really? Disaster. Didn't they like mess up all the Olympics, too? They messed up the Olympics. Yes, they messed up the, the, the last WWE pay-per-view. I knew the Olympics were a disaster. Good but. luck, Notre Dame. And we are heading into a world of streaming, and Notre Dame right there. They've got Peacock, so good for them. I will say, I mean, ESPN Plus is pretty good. Um, I rare. It's I, not bad. It, it could be better. Okay. I, 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 I've struggled with when I when I was watching that baseball run from Mississippi State, it would be spotty here or there. Okay. Yeah, it would kick me out some. Now, that may be more like... Small sport. Small sport. No. Yeah. And especially because that was probably like earlier, like yeah. when the SEC playing went up. But I have a question. Yes, Can please. Can I go pee? Would you like us to keep talking while you pee or would you like us to stop the show? What would you like to do? Well, we just get through news. If I think it's something you need to talk about, I'll just I'll just I'll stall. Be, I'll be quick. Yeah, have fun. I'm a child. For a question about Peacock. Do you think that if Peacock takes off well, has good numbers, do you think we'll see Fox, CBS, oh, yeah. Yeah. other sports? They're already doing like that. every single thing behind a paywall. Like nothing. Well, they're already are behind I, I, a paywall. I think I, they'll have to be per careful game. with it with sports because I think sports will be their loss leader, right? Sports are going to be the things they prop up. Their their streaming services behind, like they might give you the Super Bowl, but everything's behind a paywall. But this is like per game, like you don't have to you pay. think? Don't you think? Like you pay like for? NBC. I bet you they'll give you a season of Notre Dame football free. I bet you the first season they'll be like, "This is free on Peacock this month or sorry th- this year or something like that." I don't think I would put say it right behind like, a paywall. When you pay for cable, yeah, you pay for NBC. That's true. Yeah, everything. Yeah, I guess everything's yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it would just be like you have to do a. It's an extra. No, well then you don't. If it's all on Peacock, all on Peacock, then you can get rid of like most people only own cable now for live sports and then live events, yeah. like as, such as like live shows. It or is going to be interesting when we fold sports into streaming. Which which direction everybody's going to go? All right, keep going. Uh, Greg Sankey agreed to a contract extension. We'll keep him in his post through at least twenty twenty six. The SEC announced on Thursday. Good, he's a beast. Go. Oh, oh we'll save this for her, Jack. Hey. Hey, man, how are you? you Jack, know? I look at you, brother. Oh, no. I look at you and I say, there's a guy that's going to have erectile dysfunction <laughs> one day. Um, there's a guy who's going to struggle. There's, oh a, my God. there's a broke dick boy right there. And 
let's just say I had it now. That would be that would be that would stink. <laughs> but I know there's someone that could help me. There really is, Jack. Yes. There really is. When you face that lion down one day, when you look in the mirror and then you look down, you look in the mirror and you want to cry. I just need you to look at that phone and there's somebody out there. Go to GetRoman.com, brother. Yes. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. Which, you don't have to leave your house to address that penis, well, all right? You yep. get that dick fixed at home. Okay? At home on the subway. Anyway, well, maybe not on the subway. but if <laughs> No, you, no, but I could probably have the consultation on well, my phone. Well, everything they going. do is discreet, so yeah, yeah you probably could. Roman ready equals confidence. Confidence that you know you can rise to the occasion in Literally. the moment. There's Literally. nothing you want to – when it's time, bang, right there, okay? <laughs> Flag, six to midnight. That's what we're doing. For those that are watching, Brandon just – We're looking at the Summer of Love 2021, and Roman wants to make sure you can participate in your way, whether that's as a single person like Jack or a couple that would rather stay in with each other, like me and my wife. We're a mm -hmm. couple of minxes. I mean, just going at it. Yes. Just oh, no. going at it. Time yes. after time. Like canines. Like, like just <laughs> two angry canines. Yes. Bonk. A U.S. licensed Bonk. healthcare professional will work with you to find the, the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free with two-day shipping. They get that dick medicine to you quick. Yes, Indiscreet sir. packaging. They're in a hurry. Listen, To EDs? fix that pecker. Because... <laughs> Because EDs, no laughing matter. No laughing matter. Nope. Getting started Absolutely is simple. Not. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool and complete an online visit. Take care of your ED without leaving your home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional and take care of it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool today. And if you're prescribed, get 50% off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this summer. Be Roman ready. Take care of that pecker, boys. All right, coach's poll is out, and Jack had an interesting, interesting question. Does the coach's poll matter at all? No, no, coach's poll doesn't I, matter at I, all. That, that wasn't even my – not I only never, not, I didn't even have a question. I just said it doesn't matter. It doesn't stupid. matter, yeah. It, not only does it not matter, because the AP poll doesn't matter either. The only one that matters now is the playoff poll. But the AP poll, I think, matters a little bit more because – these aren't coaches voting in these polls. You realize that. Yeah, it's they their might have GAs. a. It's their GAs. Yeah, it's 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 twenty two year olds that that vote for these things, and they don't get to watch these games. So these are just guesses. The coaches poll as an idea is antiquated, stupid, and we need to get rid of it. Uh, but it does exist, and we're looking at it right now. And Casey. We just got to the coaches poll. I walked into the wrong podcast studio. Again. Northwestern did not get one hundred twenty votes. The, it appears they did. Although that's. That's I decided. Yeah. I decided the other day they're going to be bad. This, this year. was on another show. I think they're going to be a big under team. I think they're going to be like three and nine, four and eight. They only brought back. They only have eight starters returning. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. by offense, the way, four yeah, defense. Huh? I was looking at. You know, who's going to be a big under in terms of just total, like team, uh, like uh, like totals week in week out. Yeah, Notre Dame. I'm, um, yeah, but Illinois. Yeah. Illinois is going to run the ball like all like. Yeah. And they brought in a. a App State offensive coordinator, I think, who ran the ball like 70% of the time last yeah. year. Yeah, so, I mean, that uh, – and then Brett Bielema is going to come in there and just run the ball like nonstop. They don't even have any wide receivers. I think Notre Dame is going to be a huge under team. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. just gonna Northwestern is going to stink this year. They're going to yeah, stink. Yeah, 120 votes is crazy. All right, so uh, – Which goes to show why it's so bad. Northwestern getting 120 <laughs> votes, but Nevada getting two is just like, and what, what are Arizona we doing? State? Arizona State was 90. Well, I mean, they they deserve it. They're a top twenty-five team. They deserve. Right they, she, right, I think she, what she's saying is they're they're underranked there. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think oh, yeah. Fair, Arizona fair. State should be ahead of Northwestern. Northwestern's going to be trash this year. Oh, Mississippi I, State got two votes. Yep. Yeah, I'm uh, my my cousin and my brother. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're not going to go through the top, whole top twenty-five. I'll just ask. You know, Al obviously Alabama's at the top. Clemson, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Georgia. And on and on and on. There's your Aggies at number six, Notre Dame at seven, Iowa State at eight. Do you North see the Carolina first place votes? And uh, yeah, wh where are it's the first? It's sixty-three for Alabama and then two for Oklahoma. That's wild. That is me. wild. None I, for I just else. really think people are ignoring that Alabama lost yeah. a lot. If we're looking at overrated teams on this poll. We could honestly so look at Alabama. These are the two questions: Who is too high and who is too low? We'll do too high first. Casey, you look at this. Jack, Katie, whoever wants to talk first. Which team is just too high? Maybe it's because of my recency bias with this, but I don't understand LSU being at 13. I really don't. They were so bad last year. And I understand it was a COVID year. I understand they lost everybody, including Joe Burrow and Joe Brady and all of that. But why, why are they ranked 13th in the country? 
Why? Well, they're LSU. They won a national title two years ago, and people so just assume their talent they was so that great. They weren't bad last year. They beat Florida. They well, they they they, they, they brought. And they, they had a lot of issues. Under- they had a lot of. They yeah, were tough. Issues. They went five and five, but they, they 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 pulled it out of the fire late. They beat Ole Miss and Florida late and to get to five hundred. I do. Was the they right? are overrated though. They should be more like twenty. Yeah. No. Yeah. I would just. I mean. I. I don't. I don't think that they should be off the list by any stretch. But I think thirteen is too high. So that's my pick. Katie, anybody? Jack, I got one. Um, I'm a little bit surprised by Iowa and Oklahoma State. My biggest thing is just Notre Dame's offense. Right. Um, defense is phenomenal. Right. Great defense. I just don't believe in Jack Cohn. I would love it to be proven just wrong, but they're just going to be stuck running the, ga- running the ball for a while. And, but then they also have a really new offense, uh, offensive line. So Got I a don't great running back, though. Um, oh, yeah, great. But then two, maybe Jack right. Cohn is yeah. he's a, a young question mark O-line sure. that's not going to be able to clear room. Yeah. Jack, you got anybody uh, for us? I mean, I line? think we could uh, – unfortunately – Also, UNC's I don't too high. Uh, you, who? UNC. Yeah, I was. Gonna, that's who I was going to say. Unfortunately, for because I want everyone's team on the podcast to do well because it's better for the podcast. I think UNC, but, I mean, the, the program that's being built over there right now is – like top 10 worthy in the future but i think they this is a transition this may be a tough year but they do have sam howell though so i I wouldn't say it's transition i would like to be able to like earn the number i feel like you're a top 20 team yes absolutely i I would agree i would rank us about like a 13 14 and win in the top but i think with north carolina though they could also really be looking at and i don't know how the coach i mean i think the coaches poll is stupid but they could also be looking at the fact that because trevor's gone from clemson that maybe the acc will be a little closer this year and that North Carolina is the second best team. Like maybe they're taking that into consideration too. Maybe like the team I room? think that stands out to me. I, I would have said LSU, but Casey, Casey took it. But Sorry. I'm gonna stay in the SEC. I think I have a hard time justifying Florida at 11. Mm. Florida, Florida was really good last year. They were exciting, but they were also kind of they also had some really bad tendencies. For everything they did last year, they made that bowl game. They lost to Oklahoma. They finished eight and four. That was that was Dan Mullen's high water mark. I mean, they they won the East, but they finished eight and four. That that's not good. They lost to A and M. They lost to Alabama. They lost to Oklahoma, and then they lost to LSU. And they gave up over thirty five points in every single one of those games. Their defense, uh, Todd Grantham, just lost it last year, and I don't see where they've made a huge improvement to the defense. Also, if Emory Jones, who's now in his fourth year on campus, was the Heisman candidate people want him to be, Kyle Trash never would have happened. Mm-hmm. He would have taken the job two years ago when uh, the old guy got hurt. Uh, Felipe. Felipe Franks, thank you very much. When oh, Felipe Franks got hurt better. at Kentucky, uh, Emory Jones would have taken that job and would have run with it if he was good. Kyle Trask happened, and he ended up being great, so there's no shame in losing out to him last year. But Emory Jones in his fourth year, I just have a hard time believing he's going to be the difference maker. I think Florida, a top 25 team, 11. I just don't know what we're banking on there. I, you, you lose – you lose Kyle Pitts. You lose uh, the the Giants Kadarius pick, the draft Tony. pick, Kadarius Tony. You lose uh, several players. I, I just don't understand Kyle Trask. Of course, I just don't see where it is with Florida. They'll be good at running back. Still have shorter. What's his name? Justin Shorter. They'll be good at running back. He's a decent tight end. Uh, or, yeah, he's but there tight is, there is something receiver. to be said though. Like I mean, you're right with Emory Jones. It's like if you were if he was that great, yeah. he would have been playing already. Now who is players do take time to develop. Fair enough, but. Four years is an awful long time for a four or five star recruit. That at the that same is, school too. You know what I mean? It's like who is it's not to, like J- Joe Burrow transferring and figure, you know being in a different offense. Like if Emory Jones is just well, yeah. I mean, I guess I mean Mullen, Joe yeah. like Joe didn't play great his first year, yeah. and that was his like third or fourth. And then I mean so Mac, it's a, it's a fair counterpoint. Yeah, yeah. but I, I just want it on record. I'm not saying Emory Jones is going to be Joe Burrow. <laughs> All right, uh, who is too record, low Josh. on this list? Too low. Too low. Georgia. Georgia at number five behind Clemson, Alabama, wow, Oklahoma State, and Ohio State. Probably two. Alabama one, Georgia two? I think Georgia's biggest question mark was probably their secondary, and they got um, the Clemson transfer. Yeah, uh, Kirk or Kendrick. Kendrick Kirk or Darion Kendrick. Darion Kendrick. <laughs> and they also brought in somebody else, I think. They brought uh, a bunch. Um, Would you keep then, Alabama uh, at one, though? Then, yeah, okay. I think Alabama is better than Georgia right now, but um, I also think I am. It is a shame. I don't think we've gotten any updates on him, but um, the wide receiver who tore his ACL, George Pickens, mm-hmm. um, it would be. It stinks that he tore his ACL. He is such a freak of nature that it wouldn't shock me if Georgia put something in his like uh, his oatmeal every morning that helped him recover faster, um, because we have seen. 
guys come back from ACL tears during spring practice. So Georgia for me, and then obviously JT Daniels, and then, I mean, they're just loaded everywhere else. Uh, did you say somebody, Casey? No, but I think I would probably say Miami. It's a little low. Miami at 16? Yeah, just I, I like Derek King. I mean, they you know last year they there was just so many things that looked – like they were going to be a great team, and then yeah. they obviously got the shit kicked out of them in one game. But they were, I mean, going into this season with having him back, like I feel like they should be ranked a little bit higher. Okay. I wouldn't put him in the top ten, but Katie, anybody stick out to you? Um, not particularly. I think like uh, they'll see be some big jump ups in one or week one or two, but nothing proven. Like I think Penn State can rise really quickly, but they have to. I mean, something. Oregon if they beat Ohio State in week two oh, could. Okay. So you're just oh, you know, is that what you're gonna do? No, 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 my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> No, that's on me. I wasn't going to say Oregon. Also, um, I'm starting to believe they can very well beat Ohio State in week two. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I'm going off the top 25 into the voting pool there. Oh, okay. And if you count to, to where they are, they're actually voted 35th in the country with 27 votes. I think with Devin Leary coming back, mm -hmm. NC State – with a whole bunch of starters coming back on both sides. They went 8-4 and four last year. They were pretty good. Now, they won a lot of one-score games. They didn't really beat anybody, but they, I think they're going to be pretty good. I can't put them in good conscience behind TCU or BYU. BYU getting 53 votes is wild to me. Auburn with 84 votes. I mean, how you, you fired your coach. That's how displeased you were at Auburn. You're getting 84 votes. You're getting more votes than NC State, who brings back everybody and was a lot better team than you last year. I just don't understand. Northwestern, again, brings back four starters offensively, four defensively, and their second most uh, votes outside the top 25. I just don't understand it. NC State getting 27 votes. That's 35th on the coach's poll. That's who I would vote as, as too underrated there. How do you feel about the 30th pick on the coach's poll? Uh, let's see. So I'm at uh, 28, 29. Are you talking about San Jose State or Army? Or we're 30. I know I got to go up. I'm sorry. I went backwards. <laughs> right, so 34, yeah, 33, 32, 31. Q. Liberty? Yeah. I mean, I see it. I see it. Like, if you're really? going to put – Yeah, if you're going to put uh, UL Lafayette at 23, yeah. which is fine. If you're going to put Coastal Carolina at 24, I, I would – put Liberty over Coastal Carolina. I mean, they got they got the quarterback. I mean, Grayson McCall is fine, but he's not Malik Willis at yeah. Liberty. I, I think Liberty well, absolutely. Malik, you have Malik Willis on your top ten list? I do. Yeah. I very much do. Yeah, yeah. And not number ten. Not number ten. No, show oh, not. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, I saw on. another mock draft yesterday with Carson Strong, number one pick. Really? In the NFL. Mm. I mean, it was a mock draft, but there right. is belief that he's going to be. But nevertheless, he was there. All right, Katie, go. Yeah. Last uh, all right. If you want to rant on this, you can. This I is don't. nothing. I don't. To me. I don't. So Baylor didn't get anything for the Art Briles stuff. You know what? I mean, they did a six-year investigation. First of all, the NCAA is about to go away because they do things like six-year investigations. That's bullshit. It's ridiculous. It's awful. It benefits nobody. That's just pathetic. Secondly, they just didn't. Looks like they didn't find anything that that warrants what they think should I don't be a trust punishment. The NCAA Four for years shit. probation and a five thousand dollar fine. Which why even fine them five thousand dollars? What's the point of that? Five thousand dollars? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing red right now. So I just. So you're mad that Baylor's not getting punished for the it's art? It's not Bros? even that. I get first of all, I think that the NCAA is just incompetent across the board. But like, what went on there? And I'm not by any stretch of the imagination saying that it's all Art Briles' fault. Like every time that this comes up, people are like, "Oh, like, you think Art Briles was doing it?" Like I understand he was not actually doing it, but you can like if you. I was living in Texas when that was happening, and just reading the reports of just how awful the whole culture was. Yeah. Like I don't give a fuck what the NCAA has to say about it. Like I don't. I don't care. Like I understand now and katie sent me this this morning and i think my literal text to you was like what the fuck in all caps yeah. the fact that he can return to coaching now which again like if they found no wrongdoings and that's what they decided well, what they whatever. found was so his lawyer says as the ncaa committee on infractions explained the conduct at issue was pervasive and widespread throughout the baylor campus and it was condoned or ignored by the highest level of Bay baylor's leadership so this was a problem throughout the college and everything Definitely. and much higher levels than Briles. Therefore, Bryles is kind of exonerated of responsibility. But here's the thing. If you are the the coach of a football team, now granted, obviously, it's a private school, which is why the news, it took so long for the news to come out because the, the media doesn't have to report on them like they do with A&M or Texas or Texas Tech or whatever. But the fact, like, you can't tell me that Art Bryles didn't know what was going on. That's fine. You uh, cannot tell me that. And the NCAA, first of all, like I said, I don't care what they have to say. I will be interested to see... Because perception, a lot of times, is seemingly reality. What 
school actually makes this decision because I don't feel like you're going to be able to come out and be like, like if, if for example, if A and M loses Jimbo Fisher, and A and M comes out and is like, hey, you know what, we're gonna we're gonna hire Art Bryles. Like, I don't think people are gonna be like, oh, well, the NCAA didn't find anything wrong. I think people are like, no, he's a well, fucking here's, asshole. Here's what he's gonna do. He's gonna end up going. He'll be back in major college football in three years. Uh, he'll catch he'll catch a Florida international job, a Florida Atlantic job. Uh, he'll do the the Hugh Freeze Liberty thing. You think in this climate right now, people? Uh, well, hundred percent. Yeah. Well. Hugh Freeze was calling hookers for players. He's coaching right now. Yeah, I feel like it's that's a little different. It does seem yeah. like the just from this quote in the COI, Baylor admitted to moral and ethical failings in its handling of sexual violence on campus, but argued that those failings, however egregious, did not constitute violations of NCAA legislation. Ultimately, and with tremendous reluctance, the this panel agrees. So uh, well, that, they that's didn't the, want that's it. That's this, right. They don't. They don't. They were criminals, but we can't do anything. Right. Yeah. That, that's where this is so frustrating because it's like you know people like I saw like Clay Travis being like, "Is everybody going to apologize to Art Bryles?" Like, like no, they they are not saying none of it happened. They're not mm. saying that everything that went on at Baylor just didn't exist. They're saying that the NCAA can't do anything about it. All right, let's move on. Is that the last piece of news? Yep. All right, what do y'all want to do? Y'all want to do a storyline? Do you want me to rattle off my uh, top ten quarterbacks? Or would you like to answer a question? Let's let's answer this question. Let's answer a question. Okay, so I this was actually one of my storylines, but I decided I could just do it as a question. Oh, okay. Because I, I came to the Big Ten, and I was like, there are certain conferences. Watch this. It's easy. Who's the best team in the Big Ten? Ohio State. Who's the best team in the ACC? Clemson. Who's the best team in the SEC? Alabama. Who's the best team in the Big 12? Oklahoma. Easy, right? Easy peasy. Now I'm going to run back through the same conferences. Okay. Who's the second best team? Those are the storylines you got to watch because you know Oklahoma, who's won the league six years in a row, is going to be standing there. So my question is, we'll go through the conferences. Ohio State's the best team in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Standing at the end of the season, not right now, by the end of the season, who's the second best team in the Big Ten? You think about it. So <laughs> Wisconsin. You I was going to say Wisconsin. you got to think Wisconsin – Penn State, perhaps, if they turn around and go the right direction. Could Michigan sneak into that? I don't know. Um, um, I think Michigan's going to be bad. I Iowa Iowa on the west. I mean, I, I would I would certainly say Wisconsin's the favorite. I think Wisconsin. To, and I don't think winning the west makes them the second best team. No, either. it doesn't. No, no. But, but I, I, I think in this particular year, they probably could. Like you're not saying, like, who's going to be in the championship. I'm the saying who's the second best right, team in right, the league. Right, correct. But I still take Wisconsin, I think. Are we are unanimous Wisconsin on this? Um. Uh, um, a lot of things have to go – I believe in Wisconsin, and I think they're going to go over their total. A lot of things Mertz. do have to go right. Graham Mertz has to – He has to be what we thought he was going to be. They have but to be able to run the ball again. They couldn't run it last year. They ran like 165 yards a game. They have to run it again. Their defense continued to be nasty. They only gave up 17 points a game. But their offensive line, which is always great, was just – Good last year. But also with Graham Mertz, too, I mean, not for nothing, he did – like, he wasn't able to practice for, like, two weeks because he had COVID. He was also a freshman. Yeah, like, There's he – a difference it, it, it in being such, a sophomore and a freshman. It was such a weird thing because he had that awesome game. Everyone's like, oh, my God, he's going to win the Heisman. And then he just couldn't play, I think, for, what, three weeks, right? Have I asked this question on the show before, the second best in the league? No. It feels no. repetitive. Okay. Uh, who is the second best team, Clemson being the obvious first, at the end of the year – I think this is wide open. Who's going to be the second best team in the ACC? It's either going to be North Carolina or Miami or. Did you see the scores of the UNC Miami Clemson Miami game last year? That was last year. I'm I asking know. this year. I think it's UNC's to lose. My gut reaction is Miami. Yeah. But I, I would hear an argument for North Carolina. North Carolina has the best quarterback. Do they have the. I mean, like, are they going to have a good running back? Are they, gonna, Ty Chandler, it's gonna be are, great. are they going to replace these? Uh, are they going to replace these receivers? No, I have, I like the guys under us. I like the guys running back. I think the biggest thing, yes, Miami. I am scared of them, but I still look at. We beat the shit out of them last year. Nothing that doesn't matter. I know it's but last 550 year. yards of that is gone. Yeah, I know that, but I'm. I think we are reloading very well. And also, I don't. We don't play them beginning of the season, at least mid season, if not later. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am genuinely scared of the game. I think it's going to be one of our tougher games, but I'm not like peeing my pants over it. I, like, we, like, for example, when we you have said, the we have the ability to win. Whether well, play it different. When story. you bring up last year, yeah, I mean, like, if you played Florida State in week three this year, you're very confident you're going to beat the shit out of them. But last year they beat you. Oh no, Mac Brown's never beat Florida State. It's like the fucking. But you know what I'm seal. saying? Like, yeah, like yeah, last yeah. year just doesn't. But I, I, it's I, not everything. I don't mind the confidence. 
it's not it's cautiously optimistic i'm about to say it's of. timid confidence because she also thought they were ranked too high I no, I don't think. I don't think. No, Miami. I think like Ohio, Iowa. No, didn't you say North Carolina was ranked too? Oh, sorry. I yes. think it might be NC State. Fuck you. Oh. I think it might be NC State. Fuck you. Hell yeah. I don't fight. I really don't <laughs> think so. Um, I've said this before. I said it again. North Carolina does not. Sorry, NC State does not scare me as a football team. They scare me as a rival because they like to get up for this game, and it's like whoever knows. But past, okay, past two years, I know. Like, Mac Brown winning the state is huge. Like, he's putting – it's like Notre Dame and North and NC State are the two big games for us this year. I don't think he's going to sleep on that for two seconds. North Carolina, come on and raise up. Mm. Take your shirt off. Twist it around your head. Spin it like a helicopter. Pity Pablo. Yeah. He came Fine. at our concert. He I came to it. He came to Mississippi State once. He has one song that we know, and everyone else was like, all right, we're done here. Who am I? Pity Pablo, motherfucker. I forgot about Petey Pablo. I love that song. Don't sing it. We're gonna he sat in the back because it was not I've popular I've just said enough. it. I haven't sang it yet. He wouldn't Don't come out. Don't kicked off YouTube. Got a trunk when the button went. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, Jack, who's the second best team in the ACC? Miami. Yeah. Uh, I say NC State. That's wild. Um, who is the second best team in the Big 12? Certainly, Iowa State. Certainly Iowa State is going to be ranked there right now, but is, does Texas rise up? Does Oklahoma State rise up? Or do you think Iowa State rides this all the way to the, the back? I think it's Iowa State. I do want to say, though, I and I, and it's easy to be a great coach in press conferences. I'm very impressed with Stark so far. Like, <sighs> what? Here we go. Here we go. What? What? I know you hate when Getting I people say Getting impressed with coaches in the Im- preseason is the most useless exercise in the it world. Is. Well, I also Because you're basically saying, wow, he isn't he isn't stupid. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he can talk. He's not a fucking idiot. He seems like he has great character. Correct. You don't know anything about how he can coach. <laughs> I know. Anybody that says, oh, man, I mean, he not, really listen, controlled that crowd at media days. I, yeah, it's a bunch of 42-year-old I, white sports I writers. Mean, yeah, I agree with that. We talked about this when, when uh, after SEC media days. Like, Derek Mason always is very, very impressive at SEC media days. But I think that Sark is saying all the right things right now. What do you? I knew you. What do you expect him to do? I knew because when we talked about this, you. What 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 would be the wrong things if he just came out and said a bunch of racial slurs? Oh no, he's saying the wrong things. No, but I mean his mental health thing was pretty cool. Everybody's saying the right things at all times. I know. I was being cliche because I know how much you hate it. I do hate it. I know. It's Iowa State. But he's saying the right. He's saying the right things. I mean, they got TCU could sneak up. Good quarterback, Brees Hall. uh, I don't hate TCU sneaking (sighs) up. I don't hate TCU sneaking up. Max Dugan, he's a good quarterback. Um. I, I, I kind of like them, but a lot of a lot of. We'll talk just, about Big Twelve in a minute. Yeah, I got okay. another thing yes. to talk about the Big okay. Twelve and um, oh the uh, the SEC. So Georgia, just firmly Georgia. Yeah. Was outside outside shot at A and M. Mm-hmm. Oh, although uh, no, no, no no no, let me say this. I guess firmly Georgia with an outside shot of being Alabama. Alabama could be the second best team in the SEC. Oh, that's true. So. A and M, A and M with the third spot. Though. And I'm not doing Pac-12 because not 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 out of disrespect. Oh. I just don't think there's a there's not a uh, head and shoulders number one. I agree with that. I, I think Washington could be okay, one, well, Oregon could be one, USC could be one. Then here's my question: Who's the best team in the Pac-12 right now? You don't have to go second. Who, I believe you in 2021 right the best team. I, I believe the Pac-12 champion will be the Washington Huskies. Okay, really? Uh, wow. Yeah, I I, th- I think they got a lot coming back. Um, they're just average at quarterback, but they're good everywhere else. There's a lot of good interior talent and um, they get their they get key games at home. They get Oregon at home. Uh, I think they miss USC out of the South. I believe they do. Uh, I think they get air, they get a lot of key games at home. Even though you think Oregon can beat Ohio State, you still would take Washington. Uh, I think Oregon's very good, but uh, again, Oregon has played at Washington. Mm-hmm. But I do, th- yeah, I think Oregon. The Pac-12 is just a huge question mark. I think it's going to be really fucking interesting because I think there's five or six teams out there that could be good. USC yeah. could be good. Arizona State could be good. Washington could be good. Oregon could be good. Utah. Do, do not discount Utah. Um, and UCLA is intriguing to me. Um, okay. How do we want to do the top storylines and moments we're excited for? I don't know. Didn't you just – you already started that. Well, your storyline was second best yeah. team. No. That, I thought was oh. that was your number one storyline. Who's the no. second best no, team? No, that he, wasn't he, my number he, one. He, that was oh. his question he wanted to ask. Oh, okay, he had cool. a question, and then he also has storylines. Th- that is a storyline, okay, I think that we can probably say – Without a doubt, that the number one storyline is going to be the same for all of us, right? No. no. The Big 12? 
Like what it's going to look like? My number one is how does Texas and Oklahoma swan song in Big Twelve? Go? Yes, like I think that what's happening get in the screwed uh, officiating wise, are they going to our, our fan base is going to be just uh, frothing at the mouth? Are they going to catch losses that they wouldn't catch because? Uh, you know, Texas Tech is more hostile than normal, or Kansas State's more hostile than normal. I think that that's the biggest, like, overarching storyline of just because, you know, the lawyers are saying 2025, people with brains are saying 2022, so it's like, or 2023, but I think what happens with the Big 12, what other conferences try to poach other teams, is the Big 12 even going to exist in a couple years, the way the teams are treated, all of that, I think that's probably the number one storyline, because all we've been talking about is Texas and OU for the last month. Yeah, I I, I think... how does their last season – and I'm treating this as their last season. I, am I really too. am. Mentally, I'm treating it as their, as their last season because there's going to be so much vitriol on the field and off the field this year. It's it's just going to be fascinating how their last jump through this conference uh, happens. Now, Oklahoma's equipped to handle it. Texas isn't. Texas is not equipped to handle it. I mean, they're, they've been a mentally weak team for years and yeah. years and years. The first sign of, of trouble, they always just fall apart. And now there's going to be trouble throughout the schedule, mm-hmm. throughout the schedule. Well, and the, you know, and granted, you know, Tom Herman cried about it, but like you know, every school is going to be doing the horns down By and the getting way, penalized. Shout out. Shout, they did delete it. Yeah, it was weird. Shout out to Sports Illustrated for giving us something interesting for once, and instead of just a plain vanilla white bread uh, post saying top twenty-five, they gave us the top twenty-five right, the coaches' poll graphic. But on Texas at 17, they flipped the horns upside down. And had so horns down. That's just funny. I mean, why, so why not they, have fun with that? But then they deleted it. Well, it's Bitches. because people are fucking sensitive about stupid but like stuff it, like that. I mean, like that's probably their was one of their most interacted with tweets. Most interact. It with was tweets hilarious. in a while. And I'm not just saying that as an Aggie. Like it, it just undeniably funny to do that. But well, I think that Texas and OU. I mean, I think that they're just. They are going to have a hell of a season when it comes to fan bases going against them. All right. What, what if I just run through my storylines and then you guys, Katie, you look like you don't like that idea. No. I run um, through my storylines. I was lines waiting for someone to comment. Where there's overlap, stuff. we can talk, and then if, if whatever's left over, y'all can just. Yeah, no, I like yeah. that. I okay. think that's a good plan. All right. So They're all going to overlap. I mean. All right. Well, I got a couple of I have of a few are, interesting I ones. I got a couple of Oh, yeah, tweet, no, but I'm saying, I'm not saying they're not interesting. I'm just saying, like, don't I feel holler, like. Don't holler at me. I'm not hollering at you. Okay. What time is it? I want you to be ready for your it's date. It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. It's 7.55. Oh. Should I swipe right on that one? Who? He's good looking. I don't have a fucking dating He's app handsome. on my phone. Yeah, that, that was insulting to her. Yeah. <laughs> Sir. You like this tattoo? I love how you still checked. Um, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know did you see is? my you tweet? Did that last oh. week. I, we, we've done the binge tattoo. Did you see my tweet last night about you? Yeah, I did. I ignored it on purpose. Um, good, good for you. Yeah, because I it's just it not fun. real. It's just not real. Storyline oh, yeah, number yeah. two. <laughs> I mean, it, it is real, but it's not. Real. I know. Storyline yeah. number two. Don't you slander him. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Assuming we live in a world, and this is not an SEC Homer thing at all. Assuming we live in a world where the SEC is regarded as the number one conference. Let's just say that, okay? Who is the second best conference this year? Because I believe that is as wide open as it's been in a very, very long time. The Big Ten has Ohio State. But then you got a lot of question marks. Wisconsin, you got Michigan, you got Penn State. I, you get, to be the second best conference, you need a stronger number two, I think. ACC, Clemson, and a whole I lot of think hopefuls. ACC could be the worst. Clemson with a whole lot of hopefuls. Big 12, I mean, they're falling apart. And you got Oklahoma, Iowa State, and a whole lot of hopefuls. It is not crazy that the Pac 12 becomes the second best conference. Right. When you talk about from top to bottom, which I know, again, there's a cliche. Right back at you. I, I, like, let, me, let me say this. You say top to bottom. ACC lacks the strong two, I think. But the bottom is very strong. Yeah. No. Duke. No, no, no. Not the bottom bottom. Duke's bad. Syracuse is bad. Yeah. From 12 to 3, I think it's very it's tight. Competitive. Competitive, I think it's very yeah. competitive. Yeah. Yes, but it's still competitive like amongst four-year-olds. Like, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. I think they're No, I look, okay, I look at the – um, Pitt, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, Virginia. Wake like Forest is not of, a bad, bad team. It's th- That's like the seven to eight win that if you prepare for it, you'll win. Maybe like get a scare or two, but they're always good for one or two upsets. They have no business winning. Like, they're, they're not all a relaxing. 60 teams. I would out think of so. 66. Power five. 
No, I'm saying in terms yeah. of just like the nation. No, but go I, ahead. I, I, no, no, no. But but it's a it's an interesting thing because it's like when you say what's the second best conference or who's second best conference, what are you are you saying within the the conference itself? Like they're competitive wise. Are you talking about like I don't when know. Gets, I'm just saying how do we rank no, conferences? I know that's what I'm saying. Like I, yeah. that's because uh, if you look at okay, like I would probably say the Big Ten because I think Ohio State's going to be there at the end of the year, sure. w- which makes them obviously a top team. But if you talk about as a conference as a whole, I think the ACC is the most competitive. We need more within each other. Within each other. Well, no, wait, wait. Within each other. Well, hold on. I think Pac-12 also. There is like there's just so many. The Pac-12. I I'm not disagreeing with you. I just there's so many question marks with the. Who's Pac-12. bad in the Pac-12? Arizona, right? Yep. They're bad. Bad. Colorado's not great. They're not bad either. They're, they're in the right direction. Though. Stanford's not great, but they're not terrible. You know. Like, there's yeah. No, this is we Washington need more. State's like, not I don't really think good. Colorado's that bad. Like Cal could be worse than Colorado this year. Yeah, we I don't need think more cross, like how the um, basketball, they have like the ACC, Big Ten. Yeah. We need like that for football. Yeah. Like just like no, go down the that. list, one to one, two to two. Also, Wazoo pre-season. could be bad this year. Yeah, Wazoo, I, yes, yes. Yeah. I, All right. I said, I said All right. that. No one was And also their anything. coach may not be able to travel. <laughs> Storyline number three. They only played four games last year. <laughs> Which teams joined the elite trio, the Holy Trinity, the triumvirate, Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State? Which teams joined them atop the sport this year? I think – Oklahoma and Georgia are certainly draft yes. picks one and two, right? Yes. But I think that's almost what this year is, is who can who can keep pace with those teams. Although I, my next take is a little different. but Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma and Georgia are the chalk takes for yeah. sure. A&M's on the outside of that. A&M, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Um, Iowa State, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I think Oklahoma's just going to run that conference this year. Like yeah. they're cause, because them catching, sh- Ohio, uh, them catching Iowa State at home is a big difference maker. Well, and also like you know you said it's going to be it's the almost the opposite way too. Like how crazy it's going to be from a fan base standpoint of how much they're going to hate Texas and Oklahoma. Like I'm treating it as if it's their last year in the conference too, and Oklahoma is going to want to slap their dicks on everybody. Yeah. Well, they always do. Well, right, but I'm saying like even more so. Like it's they. It's fun to slap your dick on things. Oh, I wouldn't know. Uh, let's see. Why did that? <laughs> happening what I, I i have to pee oh do y'all want to discuss the take while i'm gone <laughs> well, no because they're <coughs> we're going through also your jack's list. dying ja- jack by the way i'm going to pee if you'd like to go pee it's time for a good pee yeah let, why don't we take a like a yeah, go, a timeout why don't you jack you know you have to pee no I'll jack around. i'm telling you you gotta pee you just got some mucus That's something all. happening no. they're planning something no, I'm, I haven't even looked at my phone in a minute. You know when we get the ad reads and they say new partner or returning partner? Yes. Or, so yes. We, we just we got a new email this week. Mm-hmm. Our friends at Ernest, they re-upped with unnecessary roughness. I always get scared when I see returning partner because I think it's my ex-girlfriend coming to haunt my dreams. Just one ex-girlfriend or? I only have one or two. Once oh, okay. you have Brandon Walker, you don't try to become an ex. I oh, oh, I didn't know where that was going. But you know what else haunts your dreams? Yes. What? Student debt? Student loan debt. <laughs> I was like, there's probably a long list of Student things that actually debt. haunt your dreams. Not only dreams. haunts your dreams, haunts your life. Your whole life. Yep. I mean, everything stinks when you have student loan Being debt. Being in debt stinks. It is. I mean, Especially I think we can all agree. Loans. Yeah. Yeah. We can all agree student loans, no fun. And with Ernest, though, you can get – it takes two minutes. Yes. It's not very long. Nope. Some, I promise you it's not. <laughs> and you can get your student loan refinanced and check that rate risk-free in just two minutes. Two that minutes. That doesn't stink. No, it doesn't. That does not stink. But you can also, not only that, Brandon, not only can you refinance, you can reduce your loan term. You can save money. You can combine multiple loans in a simple monthly payment. And you can even talk to a real live human. You can do so many things. You don't have to. You can do it from home. Yeah, you know, Everything's about doing it from home these days. Yes. You don't want to go to a bank. You don't. Yes, need to, queen. Yes, queen. <laughs> yes, sir. Brandon's on one today. Yeah. The, the worst thing ever is when you have to go like in and talk to somebody in person and be like, I'm I'm in a lot of debt, but you don't have to do that now. You can do it from your home. You don't have to be overwhelmed by your student debt because Ernest is helping you out and the best of all, Brandon, the best of all. Right now, Ernest is offering our listeners free money. Free money. $100 cash bonus when You're you refinance lying. your student. $100 just, just for signing up to save more money. I need $100. I need to, everyone needs $100. Refinance your student debt right now at earnest.com slash barstool. Terms and conditions do apply. Take number four. I just mentioned, not take, but storyline number four. I just mentioned who joins Trio of Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson. Mm-hmm. I have a storyline that I think is very interesting. Okay. I look at Ohio State, Alabama, and Clemson. I see a lot more holes than normal on these three teams. 
Ohio State's return, uh, replacing their entire linebacker level. They're replacing like their top five or six tacklers. There's not. I don't know how much toughness is on that defense. Um, they can get after the passer a little bit, but there's not a lot of explosiveness on that defense that you usually see from Ohio State. They're also replacing their quarterback. Alabama is replacing the best receivers in the country. They're replacing the best running back in the country, the best offensive line in the country, and the best one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Mm-hmm. Whole lot of holes when you've there. You've been saying that about Alabama. I've been too. saying that, but yeah. I, I think I see it in Ohio State too. Ohio State, new quarterback, um, running back like Master Teague's okay. He's kind of just a guy though. Travion Henderson has to be elite for them to be elite at that position. I think receivers, best receivers in the country, no doubt about it. Clemson offensive line isn't that strong. I mean, like you're you're replacing Travis Etienne. You hope Lynn J. Dixon or maybe one of their transfers is able to do it. Or uh, Will Shipley, I believe, not a transfer as a freshman. Maybe Will Shipley, maybe Lynn J. Dixon, maybe one of those guys. But you're replacing ETN's production. You're replacing Lawrence. I do think DJ Uyunglele is going to be great. Mm-hmm. But receiver-wise, Justin Ross is returning. How great is he? Is he is he going to be fully healthy I, I after spinal fusion key, surgery? Though. I think that's uh, key. Their defense will be good, not terrific. They got a lot of good tacklers back. Skalski's back. They got a lot of good players back. Their defensive line will be the best in the country, so there's enough there to prop them into that 1-2-3 spot, but there's also more holes in those teams than there have been in recent years. I would agree with that, but of those three teams, I think I'm most confident in Clemson not having it to – I mean, granted, obviously, Nick Saban for sure in Ohio State. Yeah. Like, they're going to be fine. But when you talk about the top three, like, D, we already saw how DJ Ongalele can play. Like, we right. know he's really good. And so – and on top of that, we talk about the conference. When you look at the Big Ten and you look at the SEC, like, the ACC could still compl- – it could be – I mean, would you be shocked if we're sitting here at the end of the season and it's just like, well, of course it was fucking Clemson again. No, I certainly, no. I certainly wouldn't be shocked. I, I, I feel like – but I'm not. I'm not really comparing these teams to their conferences. I'm comparing them to each other and and I, their I chance to be Clemson. elite and win a national title. And Clemson again has the best defensive line in the country. Ohio State has the best uh, receivers in the country. Alabama's defense will be much better. But I still think these teams are dealing with more holes than normal. And teams like Oklahoma and Georgia are entering the season with fewer question marks on their roster than these these teams. The only thing that Clemson doesn't have. For me, like when it comes to question marks in comparison to Alabama, is Nick Saban. Like that's it. You know, like when you look at Clemson, but they have Dabo Sweeney. Right. It's like that's the thing. It's like I don't have near as many question marks about Clemson as I do Alabama. But we say that every year with Alabama, like oh my god, they're gonna have to rebuild, and then they come out and win another national title. So, but I mean Ohio State too. Like they've they've lost a lot. Yeah. But would it shock you too if like they're back and no, the, they right. they all recruited an elite level. Uh, Storyline uh, following that. If these teams are, if they do have holes in them, if they're vulnerable at all, could we see a repeat of 2007 where there's just a trail of teams coming up? I know that's the most, oh, maybe not a repeat. So what about a reasonable facsimile? Maybe uh, of teams that keep rising up to number two and number one, and there's a lot of teams in the mm-hmm. mix. Back in 2007, you had Kansas and Missouri and South Florida, and you had all these teams that were just were not used to being there. LSU ends up winning the national title with two losses. Can this be a wide-open season? That's what that was. It was a wide-open season where some contenders were down and, and other not, not contenders were up, but it was wide open. It was just a ton of ones, a ton of twos. This year, can it be wide open? Like Ohio State, if I told you they lost to Oregon in week two, you'd be surprised, not shocked. Right. Uh, I don't like. I wouldn't pick them to lose that game. Clemson plays Georgia week one. They could clearly lose that one. Uh, you know, Alabama. I just, I just don't know. I just feel like. Would you be shocked if Miami beat Alabama? I'd be, I'd be very, very surprised. Borderline shocked. I do think Miami covers the seventeen. I don't think they win the game, but I wouldn't be shocked if Alabama lost at Texas A and M. So. I, yeah, no, that would be shocking. I disagree. What? I think there's like you have the Georgia, Oklahoma, Clemson, um, Ohio State, Bama, then you have Texas A and M, maybe some I'm forgetting, and then a bunch of space, and then everyone. Mm. I think the top is even, and then the next level's even, but I still think there's a gap. I'm okay with that. What about what about if I said instead of the three at the top this year, it's the five at the top? You just add Oklahoma and Georgia. I think You think A and M belongs in that group? I could argue either way. Which yeah. there's somewhere in between. Yeah. Really, like, Notre outside Dame the too. house. Eh, we'll see the offense first. That's my big but question I, But I feel like, I don't know, it's just so weird to think, like, Kansas was in the conversation in, in 2007. Like, I don't think we're going to have a surprise team. So here's the team, all right? And this is an interesting storyline because I believe they are consensus, almost unanimous, the top group of five team this year. 
does Cincinnati have what it takes to be the team that finally crashes the party? Does Cincinnati have what it takes to be the team that carries the mantle of the group of five? I believe they're the best group of five team. And for the first time in group of five history, or at least recent history, a team has the schedule to make national noise. UCF, I don't know how good they were in 2017. Houston had the schedule. Yeah, but they didn't have – I guess what I'm saying is they didn't, they didn't get through it, you know? Yeah, but they did have it. I guess they had the schedule. Okay, and they yeah. did beat Oklahoma. Let me say it like this. For the first time, maybe a team is capable of going undefeated with the schedule mm-hmm. uh, that would get them through. Because if Cincinnati's undefeated at the beginning, end of the year, okay, that means they would have beaten all the decent teams, all the good teams, UCF, Memphis, in the AAC. They would have handled their conference, and they would also have a road win against Indiana and a road win against Notre Dame. That's a preseason top 17 in the coaches' poll, preseason top seven. How bad do Indiana and Notre Dame have to be? Or what's their best worst for – that conversation would still be like if they both go eight and four, Indian Notre Dame, then no, I, I still goes think out. I still I I, st- uh, I see where you're going with that question. Yeah, uh, will will those uh, are those wins guaranteed to hold up with their their luster? Uh, I feel like the Notre Dame one will. Period. Just going into Notre Dame and winning, Even whether they go eight and four, or nine and three, is still very very impressive. I'm saying what big what if? Don't come for me, Notre Dame fans. What if Notre Dame goes six and six? And I just don't think that's table. possible. Oh, I, I just enough. don't see that happening. I don't either. I, I, yeah, I, no, I don't think so either, but I'm just saying. Like, just notoriously hates Notre Dame. I, I thought I just said they're overrated. <laughs> I swore I was going to be neutral on them this year, but I genuinely am just. I've I think this is a offense. fascinating uh, group of five year because UL Lafayette was, I, I think, I believe they're probably number two. Coastal's still there. Like, Coastal brings back a lot from an 11 or 12, yeah. however many they want. Uh, Coastal, I mean, UCF could easily beat Cincinnati. UCF, and I'll get to UCF in a minute, but UCF yeah. could beat Cincinnati. Like, there's a lot of. of the group of five is a little stronger this year than I think it has been, and Cincinnati has a schedule that can deliver them enough. I mean, I don't want to see a one-loss SEC team if if Cincinnati has beaten Indiana on the road and uh, Notre Dame on the road. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Um, no, see. I don't. I don't disagree with that. I think it depends how good Indiana and Notre Dame yes, will be. Yes, I agree with that too. Question. Uh oh. This is uh, the next storyline. Uh, a couple years ago. Joe Burrow was outside the top 10 preseason Heisman mm-hmm. finalist as far as odds go. Last year, uh, Devontae Smith was nowhere near the top 10, 20 uh, as far as Heisman candidates were. But they are the last two Heisman winners. My question, forget about the top 10. Forget about the uh, Sam Howells of the world, the Spencer Rattlers, even the, uh, the, the Bryce Youngs who have good odds this year. Forget about them. Who is the who could be the out of nowhere Heisman finalist this year? Out of nowhere, who's the out of nowhere? Joe so Burrow. The, so Justin Ross wouldn't count. I think Justin Ross would count. He would definitely count. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He yeah. out of nowhere because Devonte Smith was a good they receiver. Did. Also, they didn't. I mean, there was speculation that Justin Ross was never going to play football yeah, again. I think right. he, he would one hundred percent count. Then I yeah. think that that was the number number right, one name that would, opted Justin out. Ross, who, like, who's he's probably like a hundred to one, two fifty to one. I would think he'd be incredible. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, Devonte Smith again. Devontae Smith had had good years, really good years, and he still wasn't very high. He wasn't even – Justin Ross showed incredible potential as a freshman and then had the f- spinal fusion. So, yeah, I think he would be fantastic. That's a that's a wild one. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Fantastic. I appreciate no, that. That is a good one. What's your answer? Boy, oh, boy. So, it's, I think – I don't know. It's t- I want to say somebody t- like – I want to say somebody who's criminally underrated, like David Bell at Purdue. Um, I want to say that, but he's, not, he's not going right. to. He's, he's not going to win. There's just no way. There's just no way. You're, he you're, could have the greatest. He could have 130 season, catches, and he still. But they'll isn't. go seven and five. Yeah. So the, the thing with this question is always hard because, like, it always does come from nowhere. So, like, any of our guesses are going to be like, well, I mean, it didn't come from nowhere if we talked about it in August. You know what I mean? Yeah. I. I, I, I mean, I guess. Could Iowa State run the table and Brees Hall could? Yeah. What about Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson? I don't you think that's Chris, out of nowhere. Chris Olave was was was. Would was you say that's out of nowhere? Well, because we talked about this. A few I weeks think like it would think it would be very similar to Devontae Smith. Uh, you could see. Like you know, he's going to be good, but is he going to be? That's Heisman why. Good? That's why it would have been out of nowhere if Devonta Smith never happened. But now it's like, oh, yeah. the best wide receiver in the. I mean, at least odds based. He's Dorian Thompson Robinson. Put, oh, fuck you. Oh, okay. I love it, though. Fuck you. OK, that's a good I one. Think that they, is a good answer. That's somebody that could come. And he has that that 
that big that mark not marquee because week one's loaded yeah. but he does have a like let's say he goes week zero and just lights up hawaii yeah but then he can if he beats lsu yeah a marquee mm-hmm. spot week one that's a marquee spot that's a marquee oh, spot yeah, yeah i'm just saying there is clemson georgia probably yeah. on at the same time it's not a marquee spot if lsu boat races them yeah but if ucla upsets them you'll know becomes, about it yeah. like people will like, be talking like about last it. year yeah Mississippi State was not in a marquee spot. They beat LSU. All of a sudden, we, we just changed all expectations. I feel like that UCLA-LSU game should be on the Sunday night. You know how there's yes. the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, well, yeah. Sunday we got Florida State, Notre Dame, and Monday we got Louisville, Ole Miss. Yeah. Okay. Those are two good games. I think LSU, UCLA would have been just a... I agree with that. I would rather see that than Louisville, what, Ole Miss. Your, now, Louisville, it, Ole Miss, I think, could be a crazy wasn't, game. Wasn't your A&M... I don't want to talk about uh, uh, UCLA, huge... Wasn't that on a Monday or Sunday? Yes. It was Monday. That was definitely by itself, right? Yes. That was an unbelievable game. 44 to 10. And I was living in Boston at the time, and my, my now the ex... The Pimpa, the Pimpa. Yes, the... the Kane? The, my, my now ex, he, at halftime, was like, okay, we can stop watching this game, right? Like, A&M... Like, he was just... Joking me, he's like, AM's clearly gonna win. I was like, No, they're not, they're just not. And guess you what? did not say that Swear to God, during the game. I would call him right now if he didn't hate my guts. <laughs> my next storyline Mackenzie Milton at Florida State mm-hmm. is like just fascinating because I don't know if he's gonna be their starter. I know he's given it seems like he's being given every opportunity. I mean, this is a guy who had one of those oh my god injuries. This wasn't just Broken ankle, he'll be back in four weeks. This is, oh, my God, is he going to walk? Is he going to be okay? At the time, I just thought it was a torn ACL, but then there was all the yeah. reports that, right. like, oh, my God, this is really bad. It's the Alex Smith thing, where, yeah, where it's yeah, just yeah. like a torn ACL, but he actually almost lost his leg. Yep, yep. Uh, And Alex Smith came back. Now, Mackenzie Milton uh, at UCF, he was he ended up losing his job because the next guy, Dylan Gabriel, was just great. It was just fantastic. But Mackenzie Milton, this guy, he led an undefeated season mm-hmm. at UCF. That's why last year, whenever we were talking about, like, is Mackenzie Milton going to play? And, like, yeah. UCF fans were like, oh, we don't need him. Like, Dylan Gabriel is our guy. It's like, well, he was really fucking good last he year. He finished top 10 of the Heisman twice. Like, Mackenzie Milton's really, really good. And he's at Florida State, somewhere that needs excitement, mm-hmm. needs energy, needs something. They need a pulse. And Mackenzie Milton could give it to him. That's fascinating to me. I like that storyline a lot. They got uh, well, he Travis, Jordan is, Travis. I mean, yep. he's coming back. Yeah. He, he showed promise, but. He could be a running back, a wide receiver. He can do anything else. That, yeah. He Jordan, ran more than he threw. Yeah, he's so small, though. He is. I, I, mean, I, I don't know if I remember him being lanky, but I think he's like. Run, wide receiver would probably be fit him better. I'm just immensely interested. He did run a lot, though. You're yeah. right. Yeah, I'm yeah. very interested in Mackenzie Milton. I mean, State. him, yeah. like just him himself, is an interesting storyline. Let alone being at Florida State, that's seems been like a good guy a little regardless. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it him that was the picture that came out with the booty shorts? Who was no, that? that? Yeah, was that was Gabriel. him and Dylan Gabriel. Yeah. Yep, yeah. last year. Yeah. Which brings me to my next storyline. Somebody help me make sense of Gus Malzahn at UCF. I can't decide if I love it or hate it. Chip on the shoulder. Oh. Together. Chip on that's, the show. Um, well, I mean that—that's what the storyline's being wrote as. That's written. fine. That's fine. But Gus but and UCF. You, you're you're taking a a an offensive coach. You're taking a coach who took a top fifteen recruiter to average finishes over the last five years. You're taking somebody that didn't produce an NFL dra- uh, first round NFL mm-hmm. draft pick in five years with top ten classes, and now you're also taking a guy who chose Bo Nix to be his quarterback, who chose a pocket passer and just gave us some of the ugliest offense over the last two years. Every time Gus Malzahn's had success in college football, it's been with a quarterback who can run, who can hurt you with run. Nick Marshall, you know Cam Newton, when he's the offensive coordinator, he's always succeeded when he's had that guy. Now he goes to UCF, and yeah, he's got a chip on the shoulder. He also has one of the best pocket passers mm-hmm. in the country. How's this going to work? Is it going to work? Because they don't they're not a lightweight. UCF is is a, a good program. I do mm-hmm. think it's gonna work though. You think it's gonna work? Yeah, I do. Okay, makes sense of that. How? I, I it, because I'm against all odds? I mean you just, I, I don't I, I think it's just maybe it's a, a little bit of a conference bias here, but if you are coaching in the SEC, which I do think is the best conference in the country, and then you go to a group of five you, just the experience alone. Like, he plays against Nick Saban every fucking year normally. Like, I do think – I mean, I think he's a good coach. He's just playing against the Fair best enough, coach of all time. you got to beat Luke Fickle. I mean, Luke Fickle's a better coach than Gus Malzahn. I mean, this conference is not filled with lightweights. No, it's not. I, and I'm not saying it's going to be a cakewalk, but I do think that it's going to work because I think, you know, when you look at Gus Malzahn, like having to coach against the greatest coach of all time as yeah. their rival, it, then going to – I mean, coaching against Luke Fickle is not coaching against Nick Saban. 
No, but it's going to be pretty tough. It's going to be pretty tough. I don't know if it's tough. they're going to be it's going to be just lights out right away, but it just it just has this aura around it that it's like the Gus Malzahn like redemption tour. Like Dylan Gabriel's good enough to be a top 10 Heisman finalist. Is he good enough to do that with Gus Malzahn's junior high offense? Where they're, they're, they're doing these funny huddles and they're doing all this. I mean, do you think that there's any way that he would evolve? I feel like he would have done that under Bo Nix. Yeah. Mm. Although Bo Nix just might stink. That's very possible. Um, which brings me to, let's see next. My next storyline. Mm. Who is the real Ed Orgeron? Is it the 19, 2019 national champ? Is it the guy that walked into Alabama and just beat the shit out of Nick Saban? Is it the guy that beat the shit out of Oklahoma in the playoff? Or is it the guy that came out last year and gave up uh, 623 yards to, to K.J. Costello, uh, who ended up getting benched? Is it the guy that lost to Missouri? Is it the guy that uh, just absolutely lost control of that program for a few weeks? Or is it the guy that ended up beating Ole Miss in Florida at the end of the year? Who is the real one? People are banking on the fact that LSU is just going to bounce back because it's LSU. I, I- I think they caught lightning in a bottle. I really do. I'm not saying he's an awful coach, but, I mean, you and I both have said that when they made that hire, we were like, what? Like, why? Why are you hiring him? But the swings are wild, right? Like, he had the greatest season in college football history. Yes. He lost his coordinators and then just flat sucked for six weeks. But he last also year. had one of the best quarterbacks in college football right. history. Right. But then, and then had six weeks of just flat out being terrible. And by the end of the year, pretty good. I mean, I again, I, I know everybody's like, oh, it always comes back to A&M, but that's the truth. I mean, Kevin Sumlin, I mean, they didn't win the national title, but like he looked like he was one hell of a coach at A&M when he had Johnny Manziel versus when he didn't. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's he's... A good, that's a really the, good he, he Now, he didn't win a national title and all that, but I mean, Johnny won the Heisman. Kevin Sumlin looked like he... I mean, Cliff Kingsbury got a head coaching job in college because he was Johnny Manziel's offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. And now he's coaching in the NFL. Right. So it's like, you know, you you look, but he didn't have success at Texas Tech. So I feel like, like if you catch lightning in a bottle, like Ed Ed Orgeron did, and you have the guys around you and you happen to have a guy that's that talented, like good for you, but that doesn't make you a great coach. Idea. Mm -hmm. I have this list of top 10 quarterbacks, Mm -hmm. but if y'all would like to turn it instead of a show idea into a graphic idea, you can do that. Would you like like to do that? I like that. Yeah. Why don't you just do it on the Sunday show? Or are we not doing the Sunday show anymore? Well, we're probably going to do it. I'm just saying. <laughs> we've we got to do like half a podcast. And it's like I mean, I think it'd be interesting if you put it out. We'll see how much how many people argue with you. But here's the problem. I feel like if we all did our top ten, there'd be a lot of overlap. What if we did our top five for a graphic, and then we'll see who gets bodied like Katie did last week, and then we'll talk about it on the next episode? Hmm. That's fun. I like the interact. I like when we do the lists after we've seen the interaction on social. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. that was because then we get with the hot. All right, we yeah. can do top five. I, I see yeah. my top five. I'm I'm comfortable. Yeah, with my let's top do five. top five. Let's put it out on a graphic. See who gets destroyed, and then we'll talk about it on Sunday. Okay. What a beautiful thing. Yeah. Look Won't at that. Won't that be great? Um, a couple to more storyline. Off, huh? Go off of your Coach O storyline, please. My one of the my favorite storylines is who establishes them or doesn't establish themselves enough and finds themselves on the hot seat this year. I'm looking at a PJ Fleck. I'm looking at a Coach O. Um, who are some other coaches that could really? I mean, Jeff Brom if he has another bad year. Jim Harbaugh, bad. but that's an easy. But answer. Jim Jim will be there. He restructured that deal. It's really. It's Michigan friendly. I know, but I think that if they, if they, I get, think they're going to go six and six, and he won't get fired. So if they're you're, dicks, you're, if they get destroyed by Ohio State, I they think will. He gets fired. So you're talking about the pre hot seat, hot seat. Yeah, mm. like when you look at, like, which coach's new car smell right. is going to run out this Correct. year? Okay, PJ Fleck could be somebody like that because I think that Minnesota team start to approach team. their sell by date. Yeah. Okay. Um, PJ Fleck could be some, is a potential guy right there. Um, their win total is seven and a half, I think, which is pretty high for a team that may not be that good. Um, and then you have Jeff Brom. Um, you go to the ACC. I, I feel like James Franklin for the for the big. James 10. Franklin's a great example. If they if he has another so so season, that new car smell, which is ironic because he's just a used cars ma- a salesman. Yeah. Um, then we go into the SEC. Um, I mean. Like I mean, if Ole Miss falls flat on their face, like the the new car smell of yeah, Lane they could, love him. They I, love I think him, though, I yeah. think we're more. I think Leach is more vulnerable than Lane is Agreed. right now. I, I I think our fan base like 
they don't really love throwing the ball. I love it, but they don't love it. They want to like run the ball. They yeah. want to. We're built on a history of running backs, which we've never won a goddamn thing. I don't yeah, understand yeah, why yeah, yeah. we have to run the ball when we're going to go. You know, our best case is eight and four. But I love the fact that we're throwing it and trying something different. But I feel like there's a there's a bigger jury of state fans out on Mike Leach because Ole Miss fans are all in on Lane Kiffin. I mean, just mm-hmm. all in on him. By the yeah. way, Uh-oh. Ole Miss, 100 percent vaccinations. Did you see that? Yeah. There was a really funny. Are we? Buy, are we are, you don't believe that? A hundred percent. Are we? Are we buying? Hundred percent. That? That's a hundred percent. A group tough, of a hundred and twenty men. You're telling me all of them? There were some funny tweets. People were saying that. I mean, that. it's like, even that easy to figure tutor. out if that's a lie. Yeah. Well, you didn't there was a math tutor, math tutor that tutor got like hundred twenty vaccinations. So that's how they got a hundred percent vaccination, right? The math tutor. Just a lot of shots. Yeah. yeah. He got, anyway, I'm, he just, got, I'm not saying he hasn't done an incredible job. I bet they're vaccinated to hell and back. I bet they're so vaccinated. But that's 100% a hard – that's 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 hard to believe. 100%? Yeah. I mean, it, 100% is just 100%. It's, it's everybody. <laughs> it's just everyone. What, do they trick them? I mean, no, I, I think that you – There's not one human being on that, on that uh, team. And this is in the South. And the South doesn't trust the vaccine. In the South, I, it doesn't – the South and then also, I mean, the demographics of the team, it would be very – there's I'm a reason there's not a team right now with 100%. I'm super impressed if that's the truth. But a lot of things coming out of Oxford, not really true. Well, uh, let's see. My next uh, – I mean, I, I feel like that's a that's one you can't just straight up lie about. Like I somebody, mean, I, mean like, you I, can't mean, I could get a vaccination card – Right here, that w- I mean, I have my own, but like in terms of like, like oh, you can like you can like I can get a mine. fake one. I know you can like order them online. I'm not accusing stuff. anybody of anything. I'm just saying that's no. I, know, I mean, a hundred percent is a lot. All right, a Argu- lot. Arguably, the next most storyline is yeah. Kirby, is Kirby Smart out of excuses? Yes. Is this speaking of that new car smell? He's Mark Rick 2.0. That's, if he I mean, goes we, nine, and, if he goes nine to three this year, they he's they, Mark Rick. And Mark Rick. Everything that they fired Mark Rick for. Is Kirby Smart if he goes nine and three? No, this is a massive agree. season for him. We we talked about this. Was it last week? Because I mean, they got rid of, when they fired Mark Richt. It was like they better be getting somebody in that's going twelve and 0, 14 and zero, winning a national title. Because Mark Richt was winning nine to ten games a season, and Kirby now what? This is year four. Uh, five, I think. Five? Uh, oh, yeah. No, this is a so, lot of pressure yeah, 2017, on 2017. I mean, he won the SEC in 2017. He played for yes. a national title. Credit to him. Uh, I think that was his second year. So, this will be year six, probably. 2016, really? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh, wow. So, God, it, feels like, it feels like 2017 was just like yesterday. It wasn't. I know, but it feels like it. No, it was about four years ago. <laughs> That's how math And 2019 works. was two years ago. Mm-hmm. That's two, weird. Two, you can t- that feels weird. 2019, no. 2019 feels like 2020 was, just didn't exist. 2019 like, exist. feels like it was 20 years ago. Yeah, that's true. It's a good point. 2020 was just a decade by itself. Who do you think is less excuses, Kirby or Riley? Kirby. <sighs> like what? I stumped Brandon. Well, I mean. Kirby, for sure. I think Kirby is going through more pressure outside the program to win Mm -hmm. lincoln should be under more pressure Uh, you said it the other way lincoln riley should be under more pressure but oklahoma fans are apparently happy with lincoln just getting to this level and not getting i'm sure they want to get past but they don't seem to be and then they'll tweet out the i emoji on twitter and they'll be like oh my god they don't seem as bloodthirsty to cross that line as as georgia fans are I, I don't know I, why. I agree with that. And and they also stand up for themselves way louder yeah. than Georgia fans. Like, when Georgia fans at the end of the year, like, they, they don't meet the expectations, yeah. they very quickly like, yeah, we didn't meet expectations. Now, nobody's rational in college football. We know that. I mean, OU, when they get spanked in the playoff. They'll tell you why you're wrong. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, they're they're so defensive about it. Like, oh, well, at least we were there. It's like, yeah, but you just got embarrassed again. And again, coming from somebody who's been, you know, on the Oklahoma bandwagon for the Big 12, it's like, they're just happy to be there. Georgia fans aren't just happy to be there. Georgia I, fans want to win. I do think I really hate the idea of – Brian Kelly talked about this after Notre Dame. Um, somebody said, like, oh, isn't this uh, – Does it, is it frustrating that uh, after Notre Dame's loss last year that you keep getting here and then you lose or you get blown out? And he said, we're just going to keep coming. Right. Like, yeah. we, we – we, if we get handed this number four seed – for the rest of the time, we're going to show up and we're going to try and try again. And I think that's somewhere like, where would you rather be? Like, 
I mean, you could be Oklahoma right now or you could be Texas. I, I would much rather be Oklahoma and be Lincoln Riley. So, I mean, it goes back to our rational fan bases and whatnot. But, like, I keep thinking back to that Brian Kelly quote from last year where he said, like, we're, we're just going to keep coming to this game. Like, yeah, but we're, we're going to try to figure it out. And we don't really care that it's like, oh, we get blown out every time. Like, we don't care. All right. Um, next storyline. Don't we're not going to jinx this. We're not going to say anything uh -oh. about the story. I'm just going to say, okay, crowds. It's going to be great to have them back. Hope we are able to to get through what we need to get through to make sure we have the electric crowds again. That'll be fun. Um, my next storyline: When will Chip Kelly be Chip Kelly? I feel like UCLA is a snake laying in the weeds in the Pac-12 right now. I feel like Chip Kelly is is a sleeping giant of a coach. We have forgotten how good he was. He most of that's him failing in the NFL, and then he has it. He's been slow to get out of the gate at UCLA, but I feel like I got this nagging feeling that Chip Kelly is about to be Chip Kelly again. Really? Yes, I do. Well, I don't know why your, I can't shake it. I mean, obviously, look in the Pac-12. Okay, let's look in the Pac-12. ACC has Dabo, mm -hmm. right? The um, the SEC has Nick Saban, and uh, North Carolina has a national championship coach. And then we have uh, – So does A&M. What? They have a national championship coach. Oh, yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> Big Ten has Ryan Day. Like, there's there's room for to be the best coach in the Pac-12. Who's the best coach in the Pac-12? Cristobal. Probably. Wittenham. I mean, I, Mario Cristobal was the first name that came to my, my mind, but, like, that's not a good answer. Right. Whittingham is a very good coach, but I feel like – to be the best coach in the conference, there's a lot of room uh, uh, ahead of Whittingham. There's a lot of wiggle room you can get to, right? I mean, Cristobal has won what two Pac-12 championships. Cristobal's been really good. Yeah, he could be the answer. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm and, saying uh, there's Rose not Bowl. a there's not a slam dunk answer like no. Nick Saban, right? There's not a slam no, no, no. It's not slam dunk for sure. I, and I feel like I feel like like you're not debating who the best coach in the SEC is. In 2000, or the in 2013, if I ask you who the best coach in the Pac-12 was, you do not hesitate. Mm -hmm. You say. Chip Kelly, mm -hmm. period. That's how good he is. And I feel like he there's enough room in the Pac-12. I think he's about to – I don't know why I, I have this feeling. Reaction. I think he's about to, to break loose out there. It really is interesting that – I mean, you talk about – Eight years ago, that he was just the slam dunk answer, and all and the all the and look in L.A. right, all the attention is on Clay Helton. Is on Clay Helton. How's he going to? And over here, over here, yep. in blue and gold, I think Chip Kelly's a. I don't know why I feel that way because on paper uh, they mean, look pretty good, they look okay, but they don't look great. I just feel like Chip Kelly's about. That to would something. be one hell of a storyline. You talk about just like if all of a sudden UCLA just became just this, this like national powerhouse. I don't know about Chip national Kelly. power, I just feel like they could. But I mean, what if they like if what? they go ten and two this year, eleven and one? You know, I'm just saying. Um, Some else snuck into the playoff or something? Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, I got a couple more, I think. Um, Can you not read your own handwriting? No, I skipped around. It's screwing me right oh, now. No. I wrote down Tennessee, Josh Heibel. Can you still believe they hired that idiot? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Washington versus Oregon. Who is the true power of the Pac-12? Pac-12 is very interesting to me. I guess that's about all I got. I had Quinn Ewers, too, because I feel like – that's going to become a story at some point. We I know playing. we talked about him off the top of the show, but I do think he's he, because he's you know the first now able to like skip his senior year of college and going to a place where you know again at Ohio State. Like if you talk to Big Ev, who obviously is the Ohio State guy in the office, like they think he's the next coming of Jesus. And if there's a tiny little room for him to get in that game, that's all you're going to hear from Buckeye fans. Anybody? What? Uh, I mean, he's not even on campus yet. I know, but that but that's he's what on I'm campus saying. Now. Isn't he? Well, Probably. I mean, I guess when did he record that video? I don't know. It, but the I think the he's on uh, location stamp was Texas. Yeah, but I think he that. probably. But I mean, think okay. about how like. Camp stuff. You have to he's learn. You have to learn a lot of stuff. I know, but the but fans aren't rational when it comes to that. All right, who's got storylines that I didn't mention? Casey. Well, the my biggest one was the Big Twelve, which we talked about. The I know that this is a a potentially a homer take. I mean, you not mentioning A and M is it, like, are they actually really a legitimate top ten team? I believe that they are. But I think it's interesting. I've been on that, I've, I've been on that uh, train for a while, and I'm yes. not going to get off it. So okay, I we talked about DJ Ongolele. I think that that's going to be very, very interesting for Clemson. I it would not surprise me whatsoever if they're just equally as good as they were last year. 
Oh, Clemson or A&M? Clemson. Oh, Cle- yeah, th- I don't think that should surprise you. They could very well be as like, good as Because, last I year. mean, even though they, they lost. I just feel like on paper they got a little more holes than they usually have. Yes, I do agree with that. But it's, you know, when they lost to Notre Dame and it was like, well, DJ still had, what, 500 plus yards. So it's clearly not with Trevor Lawrence. Like that, that team obviously played different with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, here's what they're going to have. They're going to have uh, a top five quarterback in the country and the number one defensive line in the country. If they had nothing else, mm-hmm. that's 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 a playoff contender mm-hmm. right there. If the, you're good on the defensive line, if you're good at quarterback, you're in playoff contention. I'm trying to think of anything. I mean, we I feel like all the overarching storylines we've talked about, I think the ACC I mean, is going to be more competitive. How good is Bryce Young going to be? Yeah. Uh, yeah, any, Bryce Young for sure. Because, boy, do Alabama fans and everybody else just assume he's going to be great. Mm-hmm. He, that, he is – the size of this Revitalite bottle. I mean, he is tiny. This is not uh, this is not DJ Uyunglele, who's 6'6", mm-hmm. who's body ready right now. This is this is a guy who's not going to look like your normal Alabama quarterback. I think the the playoff picture is a huge storyline. Like, when are we expanding to 12 teams? Uh, what's that going to look like for the the group of five, too? Like, the G5 right now has no, no opportunity to get in the playoff. We all know that. We talked about it at over and over and over beating a dead horse but are we expanding next year like what does that start to look like i I feel like with all the conference changing and like what the ncaa is going to look like like the playoffs going to expand i mean when do you think it's going to expand sooner than later that's what i i I think keeping an eye on that this and how it starts to to really shake out and then obviously just all the conference changes i know that a lot of people say oh it's not gonna this is gonna slow it down we always go worst case scenario when conferences align They'll align themselves. Yeah. They'll, they'll the pieces will figure themselves yes, out. I don't think sure. we're we're gonna look at, like more more playoff means more money. The people are gonna get in line to get the money. Yes. They'll figure it out. Oh, we need to go ahead and get over here. Okay, let's get the money coming. Especially in. now showing that I mean I mean we all knew this, but the NCAA are just a bunch of clowns. Like Mark Emmert has no power whatsoever. It's like Greg Sankey is now the guy. Like they're everybody wants more money regardless. So yes, I agree with you there. We're gonna do our top five on the graphic of yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah. Do you have any more, Katie? Yeah, I have a few. Oh. Um, some have been mentioned. I just have like the new QBs, CJ Stroud versus Bryce Young. Yeah. Like big national powerhouses, freshman quarterbacks. Um, it's Oklahoma's turn, then boomer bust. You look at teams like Coastal, Indiana, Cincinnati, where they want to Love done. that. Love yeah. that. Are they actually like going to be the, legit? The, the Minnesotas of 2020, yes. like, yeah. like two years ago, they were yes. great. Then last year, they kind of fell apart. Yeah. And a everyone bit. thought that PJ Fleck was just like the absolute answer to Indiana, that. And Indiana, I think they're, they're a bust. Tell me the other two teams. Uh, Coastal and Cincinnati. Cincinnati's a big boom, I think. I think they're going to be right there, 11-1, and 10-2, and 12-0. and 0. Um, I think Coastal's a bust. I think Coastal smells like a rat. Mm-hmm. I see like 8-4. and four, maybe. That's bust, right? That's yeah. bust. Uh, fair enough. For what their expectations are, yeah. If you go 8-4 and four in the Sun Belt. I'll tell you the team that I mean, could that's be. That's the Cure Bowl. The, the team that could be this year's Coastal is. Uh, Kentucky? No, Kentucky. UL Lafayette. Oh. Mm. Because. UL Lafayette, which opened the season beating the shit they out of Iowa hype, State though. last year. They have hype, yeah, but it's not about hype. It's about uh, a non staying power. A, a, a non power five team that can go yeah. twelve and out. Fair. Yeah. Okay. They they could beat they could beat Texas to open the season. Period. They yeah. could easily beat Texas to open the season and then they're off and running. They're gonna be like they beat Texas, they're like seventeen God. in the country. They win again. That the, you look up in week five, they're like twelfth. Mm. That's yeah. how mm-hmm. th- that's how it could go for them. But they but they need Texas to be good as well. I don't think it would hurt once they get once you get the initial bump of beating them, yes. and then you keep proving that you're just beating teams. I, I don't think I'm saying, I don't think we retroactively go back during the year and, and really correct these things. But I'm saying they're going to beat other mm. Sun Belt teams. I would disagree with when that. When do we correct these things? Like LSU last year with Mississippi State. Yeah, exactly. That corrected itself. Oh, I see what you that mean. That corrected itself. Mm-hmm. I see what you – oh, okay. So you're saying that, like, if they go 12-0 and and Texas stinks, nobody's going to be like, well, actually. The like, Texas win isn't that good. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're I could see that. They will use the bump to get up here. Is that an old British cop car? What is that? <laughs> is that a trolley? What, what was that? I think they're filming I, I Mrs. Maisel. I I've never see. heard anything like they're that. They're filming Mrs. Maisel. Are they really? Well, I yes, believe but you. I, I, Somewhere around the area. Yeah. That's um, a, I thought that's in New York? Yeah. Yeah. What? Relax. I didn't. I, no, I, I mean, see I the just, Mrs. About Rachel. a New York Jew, a Jewish lady. She Jewish? Yeah. Yeah, she's a Jewish a, comedian. I think you would like that show um, a lot. Good for her. It's very uh, inappropriate. Oh, Katie's got more. Other things. Oh. Um, just Arizona State. What's going to happen with them? Where'd you get that notebook? They gave when it, I first got hired. They gave it. You to still them. have that? Yeah. I went through like forty of those. Uh, We're out of them. Tough luck. Enrique has them. Yeah. But they don't have the logo on it. Oh no, it doesn't matter. Um, this is the hot seat. Like, how fast is Fuente going to get fired? 
then the bounce back, like Penn State, LSU, Michigan. Does Virginia Tech make you nervous at the beginning of the year? Yeah. You've got to go there. And have a, what I said to walk the line, cautiously optimistic. But they're playing for their coach's job. like. And Virginia Tech has a good a good home yeah. home advantage. Yeah. No, I'm, it's first uh, – nothing there's no game i'm walking to this year that unc is like oh we're gonna be fine can i i have a storyline that has something to do with college football but it's more nfl but i am curious to ask you about this please what week do you think mac jones will start for the patriots i don't know sam ellinger took first team reps like i think the dolphins yeah, are gonna Carson be, Wentz is gonna be back though. i think the dolphins are gonna beat him week one and it could be any time after that i don't think that they will start him before week four when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come to Foxborough. I don't think that Bill Belichick is playing Tom Brady again with Mac Jones. I could see it happening right after that because Cam is just not good anymore in comparison, obviously. No, he's not. I mean, you, but you can't play Mac Jones against Tom Brady. You can't. What are you doing, boys? Nothing. Um, I think um, a few more. Um, what what was on your phone your, yeah, your head you're is rattled elsewhere. yeah you're no rattled a friend of mine sent me a picture and i got a whatever, whatever. Was it a dick pic no it's just him it wasn't a dick pic okay it'd be really weird if his friend sent him a dick pic um well we just uh, we like to compete question about notre dame and uh reloading full stands like he said the pageantry i'm pretty sure i'm gonna cry the first time i'm in a football stadium can i please say i'm going to cry my eyes out at the first live college football show this year walking onto that stage i'm just gonna cry just right there in Columbia. I'm, excuse me. <clears throat> also, that's not right. So I yeah. know. I was, just trying to, <laughs> damn, I, was, I was trying to fool them. Yeah. What are you doing? I've got hair on my mic. Y- we've lost him. Yeah. You we've have lost, lost me. I'm going to be him. honest. We've lost him. Okay. Let, let's let's just end the podcast. We'll my, do the graphic. My, my 10 through 6? No, oh, no, 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 no. Save it. Save it because if your 10 through 6 is one of our fo- top fives, we can argue about it. Okay. Um, I think it's time we've, to end the yeah, show. Yeah, we've lost him, Katie. It's, yeah. it's, it's ship is sailed. Daddy's got to go home. What, did you get like what? sex from your wife? I might. I don't know. Oh. Go I, home. Give I'm, the wife a little pickle I'm uncomfortable. Oh, okay. Relax then. That's uh, college football. You got anything else, Jack? You got anything else, Katie? No. What about you? No, I'm good. All right. Have a good date tonight. <laughs> Thank you. That's Unnecessary Roughness. We'll be seeing you Monday.